Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 10th and final episode of Campaign 3 of Speedrunners and Dragons. My name is Adef, and I will be your dungeon master tonight. Campaign 3 airs live on Twitch.tv. Well, I guess not now. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> uh i was gonna say it airs live every other monday but this is the last episode of the season so uh there's no need to tell you all about that so the delightful thing you need to know is that campaign three features returning faces thrilling action and stunning twists have you come to expect anything less from speedrunners and dragons joining us for campaign three of course our kung fu fruit cup patty the black tastic dangerous and danny b uh how is everybody uh, out there in the game reverse, the chat room? How is the chat room this evening? Is everybody feeling spry? And and by spry, I mean ready to sit in a chair or be at a standing desk for a number of hours. Um, a, a voice from the beyond says they are, and if they're not, Patrick will right make here. them. See, the interesting beyond. thing, Patrick, that you may not know is that when the layout doesn't include you, you can't be heard. See, oh, was I not on the layout? When I run the show, you can hear everything all the time because I don't know what I'm doing. But with Richard on production, there's good production value, hmm. um, which is but, interesting. But he's right there. I'm right here. Well, now you can hear him. No, no, That's production hear. value. I'll introduce you in a sec. Get, get I out. thought I was already get out of here. Get out of here. Okay. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for joining us, of course. Um, we All right, now he's talking while I'm trying to talk. Uh, why don't we get into the uh, the recap here? Uh, this will be our final recap, so it's a bit of a doozy, but I, I do think I've gotten better at concision when it comes to the recaps. If you watch like a campaign one, episode five or episode six or something, the recaps are like three minutes. But as the show progressed, I wrote less and less on the recaps, trusting more and more that people probably will watch it if they're here. Um, but all that aside, let's get some smiles in the chat room, just like the olden days, and let's uh, let's get right into this recap. All right. Last time on Speedrunners and Dragons, our heroes found themselves confronted with Danith, a dwarf from the Lyception Ocean, a distant world. This storied, tried-and-true warrior recounted how, in the time since Stephen's departure from Lyceptia, that world has seen nothing but cataclysm. Evidently, the sacrifices of the offerings on Zethus had been to fuel the creation of ancient orbs composed of pure Brink energy. It was these, it was from these orbs that the Brink entity was born, who our Campaign 2 gang fought at the end of their journey. Miles had found one of these orbs in the ancient Brink Sanctum tunnels underneath Zethus after the events of Campaign 2. Years later, when tampering with the orb, perchance, one might say, whilst pondering his orb, Miles accidentally fused with it, causing a cataclysm heretofore unseen. Brink beasts awoke across Lyceptia, and even the great spirits of the land were unable to defend it. Yes, I did forget that I had written a whole subplot in Campaign 2 about, like, ancient spirit animal things that guided the world, uh, and only remembered it when I was writing this recap. Danith, Alencia, Elion, Veril, Jader, Hadok, and Arello were able to bring a stop to the cataclysm, but not before great loss had already occurred. The world was a shell of its former self. Apparently, in the aftermath of this apocalypse, Gillian, who had just arrived after his cataclysm, uh, climactic battle with Steven on Earth, began to lurk in the shadows, stealing brinks. Some time later, when the gang finally learned of his plan to steal Salarinia's brink, quid pro quo, they made a final stand against he and the ABC in the Battle of Vellerhent. There are so many terms in this paragraph. <laughs> there, if, if I said this paragraph out loud to a stranger, they would think I was high. <laughs> there, Gillian <laughs> killed and stole Brinks from Arello, Elion, Alencia, Hadok, and Veril. Jader and Danith were eventually able to bring him down, but in the end of it all, he escaped and Jader followed. Three years later, our Earthlings... Uh, our Earthling heroes now found themselves traveling with Danith to thwart Gillian once again at Zethus this time. They traveled into the sanctum underneath the island, having followed an apparition of Miles, who evidently traveled this way to initially find the orbs. Much mayhem and nonsense occurred in the caves, from Varel lifting everyone up a chasm, to Rusty taking control of a dragon and skipping a boss fight, and Chance carrying a screaming human head, whilst also, of course, solving a puzzle before everyone else. In the end... 
our heroes burst into the inner sanctum only to see the long lost Jader, who had evidently been waiting for Gillian's return here and training, battling him now. The two had an epic encounter and eventually delivered final blows to one another. Danith then appeared to seal the deal with a well-placed lightning-bound arrow straight into Gillian's neck as Gillian was reaching for the orb as his final act. Gillian's body, its life leaving it, began to fall towards the second orb that Miles had left behind. As this happened, Jader threw the Vorpal Blade to Mamba, sure that whatever was to come, they would need it. Mamba tamed the blade, and as Gillian's life-losing hand touched the orb, our heroes found themselves on the bank of the East River in Manhattan in a now uneasy-feeling Earth. Welcome to Episode 10, the finale, Campaign 3 of Speedrunners and also of Dragons. The Dragons. The Dragons. The Dragons. I miss when Earth felt easy. Dragons. Yeah, I miss those no. easy days of Earth, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, hello everyone. I've switched the music to the ominous playlist to commemorate the fact that it's supposed to feel ominous. <laughs> in fact, babies. I should change the lights in my room to somewhat reflect said feeling. Uh, how how do the players feel about being here at the finale? How do we how do we feel? Ominous <laughs> and uneasy. <True. laughs> you know that's that that's that beautiful beautiful. Uh, delightful concision we've all come to expect from Patrick. It's straight to the point. We know what we're getting. That's what it is, baby. There's a Tokyo preset scene in my in my light app. I'm curious what it does, so I'm going to press it. Oh, those lights <laughs> are blue. <laughs> it's just blue. That's, that's you know, it's Tokyo. <laughs> it's like Tokyo to me. <laughs> all right. I'll I got turn. a Tokyo button. I'm going to press it. It's blue. <laughs> when I hear Tokyo, I think that's what it is. Uh, excellent. Well, why don't we get straight Ooh. into things? Because uh, as we know, ADEF finales are long ones. Uh, yeah. So let's let's batten down the hatches and get right into it. Uh, I'm also tonight, if you are watching and you are not a subscriber, I do apologize. You know the deal on Twitch these days. I don't have the ability to really actively control ads whilst also creating the show. Uh, but I will do my best to make sure that you don't miss crucial moments. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, Colgate wants you to have a great <laughs> smile. Sorry, I was just simulating. Hungry Box needs to... his Campbell's chunky soup. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're watching on YouTube, the ads stop. The you get stops with you're watching, which is interesting and good. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I apologize in advance. Um, well, let's get into it. Please understand coming right to you okay so you all arrived and you're feeling you know a lot has happened in the last four or five hours um you've been transported to a foreign world encountered otherworldly creatures uh which obviously is foreign to you because this campaign has been you know for all intents and purposes mostly human against human um or rat against man um and uh with the small exception of when you went into that video game that one time. Um, and good yeah, good times. Uh, however, that being said, right, like dragons, weird brink demon creatures uh, uh, traveling deep into an underground ancient cave that might be older than Earth, like uh, weird shit has been happening to you. Uh, not to mention just witnessing a man you've never met, but presumably would have been a friend being killed maybe? Uh, and then uh, Danith, a new friend, you're you know ripped right away from them, and now you're 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 back on Earth. Um, and uh, this sort of weird feeling is interrupted uh, by uh, all your phones vibrate. Uh, you get a text message, all of you, um, and it's not a group text. You're just like getting tons of texts. Uh, and as you look at your phones, it's just like hundreds of texts coming in from Doctor Sam that have been piling up. Um, over the time that you've been gone. You know, like when you go on a train or a plane or something and then you turn airplane mode off and you have like a hundred texts from your mom that all say, are you dead? Uh, like that's basically the the uh, the main thing that's going on. Uh, a lot of them are like, what's going on? Like, where are you guys? Shit is hitting the fan. Like, wh where are you? Uh, that vibe, just tons of texts um, and calls. Uh, and uh, yeah, that is what you, you have, um, you've seen. Which is interesting, since I'm pretty sure they saw us all go through a giant portal in the middle of 
Central Park. <laughs> uh, Times but... Square. <laughs> um, but uh, oh. yes, fair. Right. Um, Dr. Sam wasn't there for right. canon purposes, but it is understandable that she would be, they went somewhere, but you know, I don't know that everybody's acting completely rational at the moment, given that <laughs> the w end of the world maybe <laughs> is impending. Um, That's just what I would text back like, dog, I was in another dimension. <laughs> <laughs> LOL. Anyway, you up? <laughs> you up? <laughs> Anyway, I'm back now. What are Once? you doing? You still want to hang out or like, are we, are we done with that now? Um, so, uh, as your phones get signal and as these texts are coming in, now a new one comes in. And then, uh, uh, Polly, or actually probably Lexi, Lexi, your, your phone begins to ring. It's like so cavalier. Uh, hi. <laughs> um, Hello? And you just hear, oh my God, you're alive. You're alive. Oh my God. I couldn't track your phones for like the last six hours. We need to see you back at Hargrove HQ like right now. Okay. I mean, we just got back from a portal. Can we, let's, is there a ride? Can you get us? Where are, I, I have your look out. Yes, a car. A Wait, car Lexi, how do we know that this is really Earth? Ask her to tell us that don't, something only she would know. Uh, uh um, uh. Polly, Polly doesn't believe it's you. Can you tell me something that that only we would know, you would know? Well, actually, we don't know her that well, so she could make up anything. It would sound right. Uh, Polly, uh, what do you want me to do? I don't know. I don't trust anything anymore. <laughs> I'm 13. What do you want me to do about it? No, it's okay. Just send the cars and and I'll have location on too. It's all right. Just share your location too. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fine. Um, uh, so uh, within moments uh, a black SUV arrives and uh, the the window rolls down and it's Sam in the driver's seat and she's like this is the best we could do right now sorry um, everybody get the fuck in the car oh, oh. sure <laughs> pile in yeah um, and she, uh, she's like, what the, what, had, what the hell happened to you guys? I know you went through the p portal with Gillian. Is he, did you find him? Where were you? So, you know the place where Steven went? It's purportedly, sure. Yeah, that's where we were. It's well, real. Yes, apparently, which is, you know, maybe it's better that this happens at my age now. <laughs> yeah, neglecting the fact that we've just confirmed intelligent life on other worlds and that that has ramifications psychologically for me. I, um, I understand, yeah. Uh, I, I, and uh, dragons. To, excuse me? There's dragons on other worlds, Are there speedrunners there? <laughs> I don't know What's what that speed is. speedrunner? <laughs> uh, it's this thing. I'm a big fan of this uh, gaming event that happens twice a year. You wouldn't know it. <laughs> Sounds really fucking stupid. Oh my god, stupid. side note. Did you all check out this awesome <laughs> dice roller I just got? Wait, crazy? What? Oh, wait, I have Whoa. one just like it. Hang oh, on. I'm going to like, put a dice oh, in. It's going to roll Yo, so check well. out wow. this dice roller I just got. Wow. <laughs> wait, how much that cost you, Patrick? Back. That's crazy. Oh, it can it fold cost me up. That's so cool. You can get them. At least you still got your leg. Anyway, I don't know, it just came over me. <laughs> so, uh, she goes, um, she goes, uh, okay, well, uh, what, what happened? Are, I mean, you guys seem okay. Uh, Justin is with you, by the way. I keep, I, it is hard for me to RP all these human beings and also the guy that's supposed to be there with you the whole time. He's also what's there. The, what's the weather like <laughs> back in New York? What's the weather like? <laughs> um, it it's, is. It's moon out. It is. Need, need it your is green not, screen. It is not. We got a cold outside. front coming in from the east. We've actually got a high pressure front. Um, <laughs> it is cloudy outside at the moment. Oh. Um, what did cloudy do again? Let's consult the lore document. The Justin E. Kari. Brink immediate forecast. Okay. Uh, when it is cloudy, no rain includes nighttime. Justin can create clouds in midair, Super Mario Galaxy 2 style. He is super uninterested in anything. <laughs> that is what I have written in my document. Nice, Bobby. Bobby Ooh, always quick on the uptake. Heat wave. Yikes. <laughs> wow, yeah. I don't I think that's precipitation, not heat, maybe, but 
Oh, I, well, yeah, you know, that would make more sense. No, no, no. We, we yep. got a little bit. Because like otherwise, Michigan is otherwise, Patrick, it's the same temperature everywhere else. <laughs> 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 and only different in like five places. How hot is it outside? Oh, yeah, it's pretty it's green. Lake it's Michigan is green. evaporating. <laughs> yeah, the meteorologists are just like, yeah, so it's 64 degrees everywhere today. Um, and except, except in the Chicago, Midwest. people are dying. <laughs> A nuclear bomb has just gone off in central <laughs> Illinois. Um, uh, <laughs> Reported temperatures of 3,572 degrees. Reportedly, the sun was created for a moment in the middle of the Chicago metropolitan area. Um, if you are a loved one. Anyway, uh, so she basically is curious, like, you know, what what took the 411 on what took place. So Gillian smacked an orb right before he, he got shot. Okay. Yeah, we don't know much about that. We got we teleported back here right after. Is he alive? We don't know. We teleported here right question. after. Are you keeping up with me right now? <laughs> we found an ancient temple. I held a screaming head to go through a mirror. Then we found Gillian. He was about to do something really bad, but he was fighting some dude with a big sword. And then that dude died and gave the sword to Mamba. And then he was going to die. Gillian was going to die. But then he touched an orb. And then all of a sudden there was a flash of light. And we were here. I don't have the screaming head anymore. Weirdly, I get it. <laughs> I asked for not... some info and Polly gave nine words and what felt like only the end of the story. But I do feel like I have a, some kind of understanding now. We Thank did you, at Chance. one point meet up with uh, an ally who knew or she was really short, <laughs> very tiny. <laughs> um, all right. She says, uh, she says, okay. Um, why don't I tell you what happened here? Yes, please. Um, so, uh, I don't know how long you guys were gone in your place, but it was about six hours for us. And it was also six hours for you guys for what it's worth. Um, so it feels like it was real time. Like everything took place in real time. There's no jumps or anything. Um, and, uh, she says, uh, okay. So, uh, you guys left and quick died uh after just like opening himself onto the bullets and shooting the gatling gun and taking out all those guys um but uh so will and jameson and adriana were left to try to deal with who was left uh which was some members of riley's men some members of the abc that were still alive uh and look i mean they fought to the bitter end and uh well, uh, we're almost to, to Hargrove. Why don't you just see for yourself? Um, and uh, oh. she pulls into a garage um, and uh, the car is like <laughs> lowered on an elevator down into like a more central lot beneath the building. Um, and you sort of solemnly, silently ride the elevator uh, up to like the makeshift medical bay. Um, that has been constructed uh, because, you know, you kind of, I'm assuming, have an idea of, like, maybe what she's insinuating. Um, and, you know, you remember the last thing that you heard uh, from Jameson was basically like, you guys are the future, like, get in there, follow him, we'll take care of this. Uh, and, you know, he and Will, as you had heard, were also like, they were prepared for any eventuality from this fight. So, uh... She takes you, Dr. Sam takes you into the sort of medical bay, and she, uh, before she opens the door, she says, He's not doing well. Um, he's alive. Not incredibly stable. Will is harmed, but fine. Adriana didn't make it. Um, Jameson and Will and Adriana killed, I mean, slaughtered, essentially tons of them but the it was shreds, you say it was it was ultimately too many um oh dear. and uh jameson fell unconscious and was struck and then will and adriana tried to escape with him and she was struck on the way out or shot or something um we have her will got them both out but anyway it's best you just see for yourself and she puts in like a keypad and uh the door <laughs> opens and she pulls the door down or the uh doorknob uh, ajar and pushes the door inside 
and uh, as you walk in, there's like a sheet over a body on one of the beds. Uh, Will is sitting in the corner, and he is like bandaged head, to, like his neck is fully bandaged, like classic anime style, like white wrappings, like all the way down. Um, and he is just head in hand like this, and he is looking at Jameson, who's on an IV drip and a heart rate monitor, um, and there are doctors sort of trying to, like, use brink abilities and things on him. Uh, and uh, Dr. Sam's like, I, I gotta I gotta go take care of some stuff um, to make sure that we're ready for whatever's next uh, and keep an eye on the city, but uh, why don't you guys stay in here for a while? Um, and uh, as you walk out, Will's like, how'd it go? Hopefully you have some good news. Well, we have some news. We don't right, know if well, it's good yet. Let's hear it. And I guess we fill him in on... <laughs> or Chance. Chance, go ahead. You seem to be the best <laughs> at explaining. <laughs> don't have the head anymore. Right. There okay. you go. So Gillian might be dead. But evidently he touched this object. And you all transported all at the same time back here today. That seemed too good? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, The I'm last guy sure. who touched one of those things apparently turned into a giant monster that ended that world, so... Good. Yeah. Well, that's, that's good. Yeah, it's good. Um, right, well, you're all competent enough now with the brink. I'm sure you felt it. Uh, the world doesn't feel quite right. I sensed it as soon as you arrived, which had to have been 20 or 30 minutes ago. Um, and you do understand now sort of what he's talking about. Like, you know, you felt it when you arrived too. You'd already been in an insane world. Uh, but this de there is an aura in the air that feels different. Uneasy and ominous. Uh, yeah, one might say. Uh, one might and could and did and, and will. Um, but uh, there is just... It's impossible to describe, but it is some kind of brink-ish feeling uh, in the air. Um, and uh, Will says, look, um, as far as what happens over here, I'm sure Dr. Sam filled you in, but uh, I've tried to heal him with my ability. It's not working. They're trying. It's not working. And quite frankly, I don't think we're going to be able to fix him. Is he conscious? Uh, not yet. Maybe never again. I don't. I don't know. Uh, and as you ask if he's conscious, and by the way, Justin is like who typically you would think, given the the weather outside, would be very disinterested, is more just looking very solemn. Uh, you know, he has some, and and Rusty would obviously know this. Definitely has a connection to Jameson. Uh, some kind of mentor or, or, or similar. Um, and so he's sort of silent in the corner, just looking on, leaning against the wall, like not sure what to do. Um, and Polly, as you ask if he's conscious, uh, perhaps you're somewhere near the bed and uh, his hand grabs yours. Whoa! Uh, and Zombie. as you as you react, can you imagine... Can you imagine if suddenly this campaign is zombies? Um, yeah. <laughs> Surprise finale. <laughs> Zombie yeah, apocalypse. So Halloween. Brains. Oh my god. Um, Roll for initiative. <laughs> <laughs> what a cool a battle through Manhattan. Oh, this is a good one shot idea. All right. T table it. Table it. Put it in the hey, back pocket. Um, so, uh, Polly, you look down and uh, Jameson's eyes are opening. Um, and his heart rate is, like, stable. Uh, or, you know, you guys wouldn't know, but it seems stable. And... The beeps and boops seem good. Yes, they're not beeping or booping too slow or too fast. Just right. Um, and the doctors rush to his side, and he, like, shoes them away. Um, he, he, he pushes himself up in the bed a little bit, and he, you know, the bed creaks, he... <clears throat> and they're like, please stop moving, you're going to reopen. We have stitched. Please stop moving. Uh, he's like, fine, fine, fine. Can you just give me a second? Can you give me the room with these guys, please? And the doctors are like, sure. 
and they walk out and uh on their way out mamba they hand you a button and they're like if he starts dropping unconscious please page us with this button just press it and we'll come right back in sure um and uh jameson looks at all of you and will is still looking at him sort of like unsure what's happening and he says I can feel it. It's... I think this is the end for me. And he coughs. And he looks to Justin and he says, J Justin, I... <clears throat> my, f my friend, my, my, my boy, I love you. Please live the life you want to lead unobstructed. You, you, you can set anything... You can do anything you set your mind to. And Justin just sort of nods solemnly and, and, and starts crying. And uh, Jameson then looks at you, Polly, and he says, Stephen, a long time ago, told us of a man in Lyceptia who had two brinks, one from his mother and one from his father. The killer you all fought here in New York, I'm to understand, also had two brinks. Gillian will... <clears throat> it's a whole other question, obviously. But it stands to reason that brinks can be given. The right amount of training and expertise. Sam and I both believe this. It's time we put it to the test. Polly, come, can you please come cl closer? Okay. Uh, and he, 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 he pulls you in close and I don't, I don't know if you guys have ever been, you know, near someone when they're like sort of, but they, he really pulls you like, you know, this is it for him. And he, he pulls you in close and he says, you are the only one as stupid as me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no one Chance else laughs. laughs. <laughs> uh, I want Lexi's. I, I don't disagree with you. Lexi's probably gone over to hold Justin's. Sure. Um, and he, he he doesn't really react to you grabbing his hand, but he clutches it really tightly. Um, he's like white white knuckling your hand. Um, and uh, he says, there's nobody. This is not the right song. <laughs> ba, 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 ba. <laughs> um... Let's get that and there was really good audio cue earlier. You're like, this is it for him, and it goes. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, Jameson says, uh, you know, th there's no one in. You're the only one stupid enough to be able to use this. Besides, giving it to Justin would rob him of his youth. All right, Polly, you have to hold both of my hands. I don't know if that's right, but it's what feels correct. Um, okay. And he says, uh, you must understand, Brinks are not just abilities you are given, they represent you. Brinks are who you are. They are pure manifestations of yourself in some abstract way, I guess. Your ability in some sense represents everything you've ever been, everything you ever will be. <clears throat> With this, you have everything I leave behind. And all of you start to see Jameson's life energy leaving his body in the form of his brink through his hands and into Polly's. And what feels like maybe five to 10 seconds for all of you feels like an eon for Polly. Uh, Polly, we uh, instantly jump with you alone. And I don't know, Richard, if it's possible to do a two player. Uh, just me and Polly for a second, but it's not paramount. It's not that important because other people's reactions would be interesting. But this is a this is a, a Polly moment, um, spectacular. Okay, uh, so Polly, suddenly you stand in a shoddy apartment somewhere. Uh, you can hear the buzz of traffic outside, the honking of horns, and distant fading sirens. And, and it's weird. The colors are sort of mute around you. Uh, it's almost like you're witnessing something that's already happened or maybe is going to happen. You're not quite sure. And, uh, yeah, so you can hear the buzz of traffic outside, the honking of horns and distant fading sirens. It's the chatter of nightlife in a city well-lived. 
As you scan the likely dirt cheap apartment, you hear a scream. In front of you, a woman, maybe 27 years of age, is tossed to the ground violently. The assailant turn, uh, turns to a man who is bound in a chair and he says, Where's my fucking money, Jameson? You know, my boys told me you were a fucking cheapskate. I should have listened to him, huh? Should have fucking listened to him and then we wouldn't be in this fucking position. You wouldn't be there and I wouldn't be here. And he puts a nine millimeter to the man's head and he shoots him. And the man slumps back in the chair he's bound to and, and as his head tilts back and you get a view of his face from where you, you know, initially behind him, um, he looks vaguely like Jameson. Certainly similar, but not like a spitting image. Um, you now notice that uh, there is a fourth figure in the room. It's not just the assailant and the woman and the man. Uh, next to your feet, hiding under the couch, is a young boy. Uh, maybe six or seven years old, and he's trembling and he's crying and he's holding his mouth uh, to prevent himself from screaming. And he stares into his mother's eyes as the man points the gun at her and he says, No loose ends. Can I try to intervene right now? Yeah, sure, absolutely. What would you like to do? I'm just trying to tackle this guy to the ground. Uh, maybe try to grab his wrist. You run at him, and as you try to tackle him, you move right through him. Uh, you, you phase through his body and stumble forwards. And uh, as you whip back around, maybe to try again, um, uh, he pulls the trigger, and you watch as the young boy watches his mother's life leave her eyes. And the man shakes his head, and he cleans the pistol, and uh, he turns to leave the apartment. And the boy finds his courage and leaps from beneath the couch screaming, and he runs at the man's back, and he beats on him and jumps and tries to take him down, and he attempts to crash into the man to, uh, to tackle him. And uh, the man has three feet and easily 100 pounds on this kid. Uh, and uh, he turns quickly and just kicks the kid to the ground. He says, don't cry over them, kid. Your pants are fucking deadbeats. Good fucking riddance. And then the man leaves the apartment and slams the door behind him. And you sort of sit in this tableau for a moment. Uh, and suddenly you're transported again and you're in a classroom. It's a, a boarding school, perhaps. And there's a boy, nope, maybe a teenager, sitting in a classroom near the back. And he peers at an exam and you're sort of looking over his shoulder now. And it says A+. Plus. Uh, it, it reads in, in big red letters on this sort of like maybe math exam or something. Uh, and he stares at it blankly, and, and Polly, you can tell that his eyes are looking right past the paper. Uh, his eyes are set on something else. Maybe they always have been. And suddenly now you're on the roof of a New York skyscraper. It's pouring rain. Uh, a man, no, 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 wait, the, the man from the apartment, he's crawling on his back away from another man, and he's like, fucking, let's fucking talk about this, okay? And he's backing up and he, his hair is drenched down to his body and he's wearing a trench coat that is seeping down into his clothes. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he he's crawling on his back away, 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 but he sees that the edge of the building is nearing. Um, and uh, you're behind the man that is standing up walking towards him. Uh, but moving around this standing man proves that it's a young Jameson. The Jameson you recognize. He can't be older than 20. The man on the ground pleads for his life, and it's the man from, from the apartment, right? And he, he says, I was just doing what's right by my business, by, 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 by my family. And Jameson looks at him with that same blank stare from the classroom that you saw just moments earlier, but had to have been years for him. Only now there is death there. No loose ends, right, Carl? You should have killed me. And Jameson walks calmly over to the man, rain completely drenched Jameson. He's just in uh, a, a, you know, a smart coat and a white shirt with suspenders and a tie, and he's like soaked. And he begins to beat the living shit out of this man with his bare fists. Um, Carl howls and, and, and screams in pain as first his, his fucking lip splits, and then, and, and, and then his teeth begin to fall out, and then his fucking skull begins to crush, and Jameson, now this tall, athletic, imposing young man with nothing held back, does not stop. He does not stop even as his knuckles begin to break from the punches. He does not stop as his fingers begin to dislocate in his closed fists. He continues to punch, punch, punch punch minutes it feels like this continues just blood seeping down his hand which blood is his what blood is carl's it's impossible to tell the man's face is gone and he's just straddling this lifeless body 
And when Jameson finally ceases this endless beating, he leans back and he looks up into the rain and he lets out a deep, scarred, mournful yell into the raining night, night air. And he just sits on top of the body. We jump again. Jameson, uh, or sorry, not quite yet. Jameson slowly looks down at Carl's body now and begins to rummage through his coat. Uh, his fingers sort of twinging at pain from just touching things now that the adrenaline is starting to wear off. And he finds an already cut cigar and a lighter from within the, the, the man's coat. And he stands up, he lights the cigar, he coughs, lightning strikes. You now stand in a bathroom in what appears to be the very same night, judging by how Jameson looks. It seems like the same clothes, he's still drenched. Um, and he sits uh, in his bathtub, maybe in his apartment, who knows. And there's a revolver in his hands, and he stares an now empty stare. There's no drive left. There's nothing left to push him. He loads the gun, he cocks it, and he slowly moves it towards his temple. And as he pulls the trigger to let the hammer fall, thunder roars outside, but the bullet does not reach him. There's suddenly a hand in between the barrel and Jameson. Steven stands, jacket folded over his left arm, right hand saving Jameson's life. Lars Jameson, right? He asks. Come with me. Now you're in the Italian countryside. As you turn from the Tuscan hills, you see a very slightly older Jameson now hiding behind the turn of a hallway in an old looking building, just outside a doorway. He's wearing what appears to be an early prototype version of the bracelet. It's kind of clunky looking. And he's clearly trying to grow some kind of mustache. He's spying on what appears to be a younger Gillian and a younger Riley sitting at a table, sort of colluding. The Pataglia texts are clear, Riley. This beast, this, this, this creature, this demon, it can be summoned with enough energy, Gillian says. The young Riley responds, If we could find enough energy, how would we even control this thing? And Gillian answers, We, we wouldn't. Okay, we, we wouldn't. It might wreak, ha wreak havoc, but as soon as we get me in close enough, I can steal its power. And the two of us can craft the world how we see fit. We can right wrongs, fix injustices, and show everyone what true unbridled power looks like. Riley, we, 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 we can fix things. This, this Collegrio thing, if it's real, it's the key to the future that you and I know is right. And the two clasp hands in the sort of like, you know, the, we're, we're going to do this. Uh, and the young Jameson sneaks away. Finally, you feel, you stand on one of such Tuscan hills that you had just seen out the window as the same age Jameson cries over his comrades' bodies, members of the eight killed by Gillian, but minutes ago, no doubt. Dominique and Helen, probably. Jameson wipes his tears and looks down into the valley and sees Stephen battling Gillian. Jameson suddenly bursts with energy and his scythe appears. He, he grabs it. And as this happens, he yells in pain suddenly as the scythe doubles in length, much to his amazement, it seems, and turns a bright red. He has no idea what's going on. That's very clear. But with a newfound sense of vengeance, something new to drive him, he begins to run down the hill. He's about 100 feet away from Stephen and Gillian, and Stephen delivers what appears to be a final blow to Gillian, and Gillian disappears in a burst of white light. Suddenly, you're back in the harbor of HQ clinic. What for the rest of you, again, was five, maybe ten seconds. Polly, you just experienced all those moments in real time. And having shared in Jameson's memories, you feel the final bit of his life leave his body, and you understand his brink completely. You may now use Hell's Agent and or Death Storeman at will. Um, and I can send you info for that. Music uh, as he, uh, as he leaves us, I say, I won't let you down. You are Frankie. And he feels, he feels that. And, uh, Justin sees that it's clearly over and, and looses Lexi's hand and, and runs over to the body and just like grabs the arm and just begins to bawl. Uh, I'm gonna cry too. Sure. Um, and Will looks at all of you. 
I'm afraid you're going to have to finish this on your own. I'm not in any condition to fight anymore. And it seems like I'm the only member of the eight left. <laughs> None of you are the individuals that you were before. When I met you, you were completely different. You've been set on an irreversible path towards a destiny no one would envy. That does not change the fact that we need you, and it does not change the fact that you are who you are, and you can do what you do. Is there anything in the room I could steal? <laughs> mm. uh, a moment, probably. <laughs> a nice moment. Um, and he says... Uh, I he am says, who I am, baby. What you do next, what you choose to do, is entirely up to you. I won't judge. But know that I do believe in you. And he turns his bracelet, and he uses uh, one of his facets of foreign exchange to heal you. Uh, as you remember, he did this once before. Um, and he, uh, you have re recovered all your health, all brink slots, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You are fully healed. Uh, you feel any scars from battle or anything are also completely fixed. Um, and uh, Justin stands, and he wipes his tears, and he turns to the lot of you, and he says, "This man was the closest thing to a father I have ever had. Let's fucking end this." And he just walks out the room. Um, and, uh, yeah, what would you like to do? I was, uh, uh, we have, really... like, limit or, like, uh, Lexi wants to go make a quick mod on Max. <laughs> okay. Have some points <laughs> left over. Sure, 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 gonna sure, sure. upgrade him. Um, we'll handle it in just a second. Okay. I kind of look around the room after Justin leaves and just kind of say, that's great and all, but like, where, who, <laughs> what? Uh, what are we doing? <laughs> and you just hear Justin call, you hear Justin call from the hallway and he's like, I don't know. It sounded cool in my head. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, and... do you know where we go? Who, do, who are do... you asking that to? Well, uh, Will says, if anybody's going to know anything, it'll be Sam. Well, Sam, Sam's not in the room, right? No, she went to go do something in the lab. Um, and uh, you're, you're more than welcome to go find her if you'd like. Quest updated. Find Sam in the lab. God, you have to walk all the way there. And <laughs> it's like, I've already walked this hallway like a hundred times. Um, okay. Uh, finding Dr. Sam. Um, oh, I drop, I drop, oh. I drop twins. Got it. Sorry, I couldn't shed any tears. I'm pretty fake. I'm just trying. <laughs> oh my God, babe, so fake. Oh. Uh, Could I get that brain real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't I just <laughs> tell it to you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's cool and all. Can I? <laughs> um, okay, uh, so the Hell's Agent um, is... Uh, plus dex plus proficiency to hit because it's just a summoned weapon it doesn't change your physical attributes in any way mm -hmm. um also you can't use two brinks at the same time yeah um so you have to like one or the other uh or like interchangeably or whatever uh so it's plus dex plus proficiency to hit 2d10 slashing plus dex uh and the reach is 10 feet plus strength plus proficiency no no, no plus dex plus proficiency. oh sorry i got the first thing wrong we're doing great Plus dex, plus proficiency 2D10. to hit. Two, mm, let's, mm, yeah, 2d10 two, two slashing plus dex for damage. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it like, when I say it, it has reach, not the reach is 10 feet, but it has reach. So you can okay. strike somebody an extra feet away from you. Yeah. Um, then death's doorman, which is the like bonus version, mm -hmm. uh, is the same, plus dex, plus proficiency to hit. Mm -hmm. uh, it kills instantly. Um, and, uh, it sits at 60 seconds currently. It sits at one minute, you feel. And as you know, every second that passes, if it ever strikes zero, you die. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, every individual that you kill with it, um, you soak back in five seconds. I can, um, I can dispel it whenever I want? Yes. Okay. 
Um, and uh, the reach on Death's Doorman, which is the red scythe, is an extra five feet. Okay. And that's it. That's all the info on that. Um, and a uh, number of times it can be used. We'll say Death's Doorman can be summoned twice per day. Uh, and it requires an action to dispel. Okay. I feel like that's a good balance. Um, and Hell's Agent can be used as many times as you'd like. The base form. Okay. Are they all regular actions to start them as well? Yes. Okay. Bam, bam. Blah, blah. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Uh, so Dr. Sam starts rushing down into the hallway and she's like, oh, okay, you guys are already coming up. Yeah, follow me, please. Um, and uh, she seems rushed more than usual. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, Lexi, could I get a perception check from you, uh, as we run through the hallway here? Um, uh, it's high. Okay. Um, uh, it's, uh, a 23. Yeah, uh, as you run through the hallway behind Dr. Sam, you, like, catch a glimpse really quick. Uh, Lyle is, or not Lyle, what was that, was that his name? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's in the corner, and he's, like, weirdly there. And he's just like, and that's it. That's the whole perception check. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. Right. Uh, oh, he's at he's at Brink HQ right now. He's at Hargrove, which is where yeah. he lives. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought we were in the lab for a second. Give him a wave. That, that made me happy. Wave. Uh, no, meanwhile, at Brink on. HQ. <laughs> he just Somewhere gets at. it. Okay, he just gets it. All he right. just gets it. Um, so uh, Dr. Sam begins to, once you're all in the lab, she's like, okay, uh, so I've already set things in motion because um, uh, shit hit the fan in the like 10 minutes you guys were just in there. Uh, it turns out it had already been hitting the fan and my staff were taking care of it. I didn't know. It's been happening since I picked you guys up. Anyway. Um, what? So uh, 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 um, after a New York 2 closed, uh, this is a part I left out. Uh, you probably noticed that there were like no people. Um, on our drive from the river to here, like that was weird, right? There was like no traffic. Um, yeah, so when Riley was killed and New York 2 closed, uh, New Yorkers began to see what was happening because Facade Zorman was closing and Times Square is a pretty popular place. Uh, and so there were thousands of tourists that saw scores of henchmen from a foreign world, uh, some of whom were not human, um, and scores of henchmen from our world with lots of guns and pandemonium, as you can imagine. Uh, and so, uh, um, I, I, I communicate, my staff communicated, um, to, to, to the mayor of New York City, then we should evacuate d the island. Um, and so, t I spoke to the mayor, and I explained the situation, and he knew Stephen, and, uh, so, essentially, he knew that there was this power he didn't understand. Like, Stephen had been in cahoots with him, like, trying to be like, hey, like, just so you know, like, you know, like, in Harry Potter, there's, like, the muggle prime minister who, like, doesn't understand magic, but, like, he knows that it exists insofar as, like, if there were a terrorist organization who used magic. Obviously, yeah, of course. Okay. I completely so it's, get it. It's like that, I guess. That's, like, the closest analogous thing I can give you. Um, Pants is a Harry Potter fan, right? I remember that. I think vaguely. that is true. I think that is in your <laughs> I vaguely yeah. remember um, that. <laughs> that notorious turf, J.K. Rowling. Mm. Uh, and so uh, she then says, yeah, apparently the mayor used to date Stephen's wife or something. I don't know. So anyway, I called him and I told him to order a mass evacuation of the city. He said, yep, no problem. Um, and, uh, so, yeah, that was a couple hours ago. Everybody's gone now. Um, uh, uh but... Um, Gillian's body has been just, uh, just been found, um, by our, uh, satellites. Uh, it's, uh, on a boat, um, uh, in the Hudson right now. His body? Yeah, it doesn't appear to have life. Um, uh, but, uh, but, but there's, um, well, how do I, mm, it's best to just see it for yourself. And she's like, uh, why, why don't you go to, to the roof? We, we could see it from the roof from here? Yeah. Okay. You won't see the boat, but you'll see the... Mm, ...event anyway. in question. Hmm. Okay. Lexi can lead the group. Yeah, yeah. So this is you... quite suspenseful, Dr. Sam. 
Um, yeah, I don't know how to explain it exactly. Um, so you get to the uh, you get to the roof, and as you open the door, there's like this crazy wind going on, and yet the air also feels still. Uh, the uneasy energy that had been pervading the atmosphere is now like, what the fuck is going on? Um, and uh, you look towards the Hudson, and you can't really see a boat or anything, but you do see what's above it. Uh, there is like this streak of purple in the air, like just hovering in the clouds. And it's like slowly getting bigger. Just... Well, that doesn't look good. Can we get a, can we get a plane up there? Has anybody gone up there? Uh, I don't think we should go. I don't think we should go up there, says Dr. Says, what she says back there. She's like, the energy readings out of this thing are fucking off the, pardon my French, they're off the charts. That was all English. Oh. <laughs> but she's like, it out. she's you like, you want an M&M? Yeah, green. sure. Uh, I'll take bl uh, blue, blue, please. I just offered, okay, yeah. Put the green one back and give her a blue one. Um, <laughs> and she says, uh, she says, the like, I feel like if we get within 100 feet of that thing with electricity, it's going to get EMP'd. Hey, Pikachu. Hey. What? P Pikachu? Pikachu? Yeah, that's, that's Lexi. Paul has used that name a bunch of times. Has he? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that either. <laughs> I, I believe it. <laughs> At least like three times. <laughs> like twice, maybe. Okay, so I should not go near that? She's like ignoring Polly. What if you do? <laughs> but what if you do, though? Didn't we just hear it would be bad? <laughs> yeah, you, but you're maybe like you the could electricity that. person. Are you really trying to send a 13-year-old to her fucking death right now? Who said I mean, his death? <laughs> I mean, he's right. This is the smartest thing Polly's ever sent. You could absorb all that energy. She you can. have like a you you got like a, a battery capacity or something? Uh kind of. I guess you could call it kind of like that. Um so what 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 do we think what do we think is gonna happen exactly? Dr. Right, Sam. So what is we're like, gonna do is we're gonna slingshot like you over to the the gap in the sky. No, and geez. as you fly by, you're gonna soak up all of the energy <laughs> and solve all of our problems. High five. I don't know if that's the smartest way to go about it. Um, is there anything we could send up that that's not a person? I think we could send up there really quick, or do we think, I don't know, do we have a, a telescope, a telescope to, like, look more up close to this? Uh, I, look, uh, I've been performing uh, tests on the energy readings for the last 15 minutes, if you guys want to see the data. Yes, please. Okay, let's go back downstairs. I'm good. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Patrick is uh, done on the show. That's, <laughs> and that's a wrap on Patrick. Um, oh, man. Uh, so you 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 hurry down the stairs. Um, and uh, she's got like all kinds of models and simulations already going on this thing. Um, because she's like, so it's kind of similar to the portal that like it's giving similar energy readings, just like 40 fold as far as output. Um, so I already had models ready that were adaptable quickly, thankfully, and my research team are the best. Mm. Love you guys. And you turn and just the four most tired people you've ever seen are like, <gasps> let's go. <laughs> they have like pencils in their hair and like one of them is like pulling clumps of their hair off their head. And like ramen noodles are all over their shirt and they're like, oh man. <laughs> Uh, and uh, the the and she's like those fucking legends, and she turns back to the monitors and she's like, cool. So by my calculation, if this thing's gonna open, which I think that it will, we've got about an hour. Should we maybe, at very maybe least, two. get Gillian's body away from that thing? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Should we go do that, like, right now? I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Yes! 
small snafu. There are guards um, around the body. Uh, um, uh, but you guys are tough. Um, and uh, if you guys were to want to say goodbye to loved ones or friends uh, or family, uh, now now might, uh, might be the time. Aren't they all not in New York? A uh, f- uh, phone phone call phone call. <laughs> oh, okay. You, you gotta. You, I don't know what works where anymore. It's like. What about my dad? Of... Has he evacuated the building? Who? The president of the company. Oh, your father. Um. Uh. Um. I don't. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. Uh. Why don't we? Why don't we ask Lyle? He sort of appears whenever I say his name. Yep. There he is. Uh, and she turns and he's right there and he's like, your father is upstairs awaiting your arrival for a quick He's still chat. here? Yes. No concern okay. for me, though. I'm still here, too. You can handle yourself while Lex That's is right. going. I can. I can. That's true. She's That's gone. True. Max, come. So they go. <laughs> Fucking dilapidated <laughs> robot. It's like from interdimensional travel is like trying to keep up with you. Uh, super, super fine. quick aside. Have you yeah. played Symphony of the Night, Clay? No, but it is like up next on my casual He's list. Awesome. Yeah. I'm playing through it right now. I bring it up because there is a character. He's like a librarian. He talks exactly like your Lyle voice. Exactly. <laughs> the, the only reason I do know the voice is because I've seen the arbitrary code execution any percent run of Symphony of the Night so many times. Mm. And that run is like exclusively talking to that guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Can't wait. Tell me what you need. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fairy card. Um, this interests yeah. me. Excellent. Uh, what is a man? So anyway, uh, Lexi, we'll say that your dad uh, is willing to meet you in the place where you workshop Max so you can like do upgrades while you talk to your dad. Be great. Um, so we, are we taking a moment to like recuperate before we go? Yes. How you've much? Got time? Like 20 minutes. Okay. So and like Max just eat, eat some in. food maybe, get some inner, like eat a little bit, drink some water. Steal some things. Steal some things maybe. Yeah, why not? It would be um, cool if it was an hour, but that's that's all I'm gonna say. Why why is that? There's an ability I have that I would like to use. Because I have Alright, well yet. you know what? Let's retcon just for Rusty. <laughs> Only because you're a three season player, I'll give it to you. Yes. Um <laughs> we'll say that uh, we'll say Got that, that three I, season I, discount. I was initially going to allow a longer time anyway because I had initially planned for the evac to happen later so you could like go see your families or whatever, mm. but that didn't really make sense in the grand scheme of things. So we'll say you have three hours total. Okay, great. Um, a lot more realistic. Before for... like the portal opens. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, how you budget that is up to you. Uh, so okay. let's, let's start with Rusty. Rusty, what are you doing? Yeah. Well, he says, well, I mean, all my family is kind of just rats. I'll find them in the street <laughs> somewhere, I'm sure. <laughs> but I am going to go take some time to prepare. And he asks Dr. Sam if there's like a, a lab that he can borrow to craft some things. Uh, she says yes, uh, and there's like a tiny room uh, to the side with like a bunch of various. So there's like 3D printers and spectrographs and things like that. Great, that's where you'll find Rusty. Okay, um, Mamba, is there anything you'd like to do in this time? I think he's gonna be. Uh, he doesn't really know anybody. He's gonna be just like I guess wandering and like ennui for like a little while, just kind of like witnessing everyone else kind of make their amends and all that, kind of taking that in vicariously. Sure. Mild meditation. Mm. Yeah. Uh, chance, I assume. Well, you know what? We got to come to you later because it's going to be was... theft. Mm -hmm. um, Pauly? <laughs> uh, I'm going to be calling my parents, I guess. Uh, they they pick up. Your mom picks up first ring. Uh, literally the Rip. first ring immediately. Uh, I put, Pauly! Yeah, Mama Lasagna, you there? Hey, that's my fucking firstborn. How's uh, how's Frankie doing? I know that I know that he was not doing too hot. Frankie's Frankie. stable, baby. It takes more than a little a little scuff up to kill my boys. Wait, are you serious? She, he's okay. 
He's oh, he's gonna do well. All right. Besides the permanent paralysis and the uh, massive loss of blood and current coma, he's fine. I mean, that's the best news I've heard in a long time. Where are you guys at? You guys got out of the city. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're at your uncle. We're at your uncle Tony's. Uh, in Paramus. Um, that uh, in Paramus right now. Uh, we just thought that was best. We actually left a couple days ago. Uh, because uh, we had some. Uh, you know your, you know your 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 cousin uh, Domenico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So cousin D, cousin D is a surgeon at Paramus General. And so we t we decided we didn't like those fucking schmucks uh, that were uh, that were saying our boy's not gonna make it uh, at New York General. You always so, get a second opinion. Always get a second always opinion. Always get a second opinion. That's what my boy knows. Uh, anyway, so we took we took uh, him over there, much to the chagrin of every emergency room physician we spoke to. Uh, they said, "Do not move this child. He will die." Um, but we said, "You know what, fucking." The lasagna blood, born and raised, he's gonna be fine. And God damn it, he's stable. Your cousin Dominico got us in nice. He's doing great. He's a top of line, top of the line care. That's that's great, man. Paul, Listen, you had I a gotta... good meal. You had a good meal recently. <laughs> yeah, you I'm sound, actually. You sound thin. You sound thin, <laughs> Paulie. <laughs> I'm having I'm having a good meal right now, Ma. But listen, I gotta tell you something. Can you you look? What are you, you eating? Look... What are you eating? I'm eating some lasagna right now. Let's uh, fucking forget about it. All right, what did you? What are you gonna say? <laughs> just that you can you you look east lately? You ever you ever look east? What is this? Some fucking parable? <laughs> no, I'm I'm serious, my look uh look look east if you if you can see the way the how, river's how, at. How far is Paramus from <laughs> from New York City? <laughs> Calculate the curvature of the horizon. Oh yeah, you can. Oh yeah, yeah yeah. yeah. Um, she says, I'll, uh, I'll go outside right now, Paulie. I'll go outside right now. This is weird, but I'll go outside. Anything for my boy. Where are you, by the way? I'm, uh, I'm I in Manhattan. I couldn't get a hold of you. I couldn't get I'm a hold in, of you. I'm in Manhattan right now. Okay, wait, well, that's where we're not supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why I'm calling, my Cuomo, Let me know. Cuomo, whichever fucking Cuomo is in charge right now. Whichever fucking Cuomo. State of emergency, whatever, fucking some kind of attack or something. So you know, we you got to get out of there. I'm well, like a little bit. Um... Tony Soprano. No, no. no. Christopher Give me Walken. Some Christopher Walken right now. No, I, I'm so hungry. <laughs> it's no, no, it was sneaking in there. No, it was sneaking in. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to lean into the like. Me do a cell phone carry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yo. Um, <laughs> she says, oh, Paulie, you're not supposed to be in Manhattan right now. Yeah, Ma. That's uh, that's why I'm calling you. You see the thing in the sky out there? Jesus, Lord on high. What in on God's good earth is that? <laughs> so that's like a portal to a different dimension and shit. And there's going to oh. be like, if I don't do something about that, there's going to be a big monster that comes through there. So I can't really explain why, Ma, but uh, that's my responsibility now. I gotta take care of that shit. Paulie, for Frankie. Paulie, if anybody, if anybody else in the world that's not blood would have said what you just said to me just now, I'd have said, hold the fucking phone. I got some fucking jokes to prank calling me. And I'd say, get your ass downtown. My boys will beat the shit out of you. That'd be but, a crazy prank, Ma. That shit's up in the sky. You could see I know. It. Wait, no, it's, I know. But it could be some kind of weather anomaly. But because you're my boy, and because I know you don't lie, because I taught you good, I, I believe you, I guess. Uh, should I be... Should we be getting further away from the city? No, Ma. Just uh, give everybody a hug for me, all right? Give, give them all. Paulie... Pauline, Giovanna, Giovanni, Antonio, Antonia, Francis, Raymond. Just give them all yeah, a big hug. Raymond, you know, I never heard the list out loud before. <laughs> like in one contiguous go. What were we thinking <laughs> on that last <laughs> one? We could have well, fit, like, fit like four more Domenicos in there. <laughs> that's all right. Everybody loves him. It's good. Yeah, we do. We, everybody. Hey, that's funny. That's that sitcom. That's that situational comedy show. <laughs> I like that one. That's a good. That's a good two camera. Uh, all right, Paulie. Will you stay safe? I love you. 
Um, and uh, we got a chicken parm ready in the oven for when you get here. I'll be there soon, ma. I don't think that's true, but hopefully sooner rather than later. Uh, uh, mwah, your mother loves you. Your father's drinking coffee and telling me to get off the fucking phone, so I'm gonna hang up now. Right. Bye, ma. Bye. Uh, and she she hangs up. Um. Uh, <laughs> great. Always good to get a little casual racism in. Um, just on the side, accidentally. That's great. Italian's not a race. Oh, You're good. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, anyway. It's a nationality. Speedrunners and dragons decries any form of casual racism, and, uh, that's our stance. Um, we will go now to, uh, Mamba's feeling on we. Polly called his ma. Rusty's in the lab. We'll go to Lexi. Right. Yeah, she's gonna be working on Max for a little bit. Um, got some stuff that was mostly done, so bring that up. And uh, I guess she'll let him. Like, it'll be some stuff that's uploading to his system. Sure. Then go see her dad. Um. Great. Yeah. The upload progress bar begins. Um. And uh, your dad uh is in his office and he's drinking a whiskey. Um. And, uh... He's working. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, and, uh, he's like, Oh, Lexi, perfect. Uh, there are, like, a thousand files I have to get through this evening, uh, so it'd be a big help if you could lighten the load a little bit. Yeah, you understand what's going on, I'm, right? I'm, I'm joking. I'm kidding. Like, <laughs> what? I'm kidding. Look, I know you usually do work, I understand, but why are you still here? It didn't feel right to leave. There are people in my building who, they might not be employees of mine, but at the very least, they need to know that there's some kind of stability. Is there anything that you can do if you're not leaving to help us? I mean, any and all of my resources are available to you, honey. You know that. Yeah, but what about Brink? I can't really use it like you can. I'm really scared. No, I'm like with this group of like all these guys. And <laughs> everybody has so much pressure on me. And I understand that like what's expected of me anyway. But it's just like there's a big thing in the sky that's opening up. And I've been through so much that I don't, I don't, I haven't been trained to deal with any of this. I haven't been taught any of it. And I know I should be more confident, especially around you for, for everything I've been studying. But uh, he stands and he walks over and he sits down in front of you, just like crisscross applesauce on the floor. And he's <laughs> like, he's like, sweetie, the, the, look, you've always had drive and, and, and ambition and, uh, your mother and I love that about you. And, you know, there's no doubt that you will do great things. Um, but there is an unteachable X factor to leadership to, to, you know, one day sitting in the chair where I sit, or maybe not, if that's not what you want, that's fine. You have to learn to face these things head on. And I'm not saying what's happening to you is fair or just or right, but it is what's happening. And it's unfortunate that you are in the position you're in at such a young age, but you've handled it so beautifully already. And look, I, I'm behind you all the way, and I know these guys are weird, and it's a bunch of older dudes, and it's weird, but they are your friends, and they are helping you, and they have your back. This is like a like a stretch, but <laughs> you don't think you're? They're not. They're they're a little. I saw a term on uh, t TikTok uh, yesterday. Um, there are they too cr cringe? Are they crin cringy? No, it's not. Am I cr am I cringe? <laughs> right now you're. It's a little cringe. That's okay. I'm just trying to be nice to my daughter. Is <laughs> if being nice to your daughter is cringe, then damn it, I don't want to be based. <laughs> okay, it's okay. Calm down. I am. Um... Hey. Uh. Hey. No, it's just a lot of breathing. She's like, like a, probably crying a little bit. Just very, very long week. Yeah. Um. He grabs your hands. He says. I love you. You're going to do great. I'm there. I'm watching. I'm nearby. 
And if at any second you want to jump the fuck out of this, sorry for the language, and just... That is an okay answer. You are 13. Dad doesn't calm down a lot. He's just like yeah. father or like... Right. Uh, and he says, all the training and everything you do is to prepare you for the next steps, sure, but ultimately the decisions are always yours. Okay. You please get out of here if anything else bad happens. Sure. I don't believe you. That's good. That's good lie detection. That's good. That's a good skill. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and he stands up and he's like, I'll walk you back downstairs. Um, and, uh, we'll go to Chance. Chance! What's the 411, my good man? I want to go steal things. Yeah, I know. Um, what is it that you're looking for? It's a big building. Can I leave the building? Sure. You have an hour. Yeah. Walk around the street looking for... Anything that might be useful, I guess, in a fight, since I know I'm going to be doing something, probably. Uh, the city is abandoned. Um, looting. Yeah. Looting is the term at this uh, point. And so there's there's nobody um, within two miles radius, basically. Um, and uh, I, I don't know. Uh, you're in Midtown. Um, you're in, like, Hell's Kitchen area, like... 38th street um you're not gonna find a lot of weapons stores in manhattan <laughs> um uh what uh, i'm trying to think of what you could go do i mean um, i could just steal random shit sure. i just want to steal um there is a uh what, what is the exact cross street that you're at have it written down somewhere Hargrove is at 52nd and 8th um so yeah you're you're like proper midtown um i mean you can go back to times square and see if there's anything there actually yeah maybe see if there's anything on the countless corpses yeah. <laughs> the mta crew is just like slowly pushing bodies with brooms <laughs> um no, uh, so yeah, you, 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 you can make it back to, uh, Times Square pretty quickly. Um, even just on foot can't take more than 10 minutes. There's no cars. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, or at least there are cars that are parked, but there's no, like, you don't have to worry about getting run over. Um, and, uh, you make it there and it is just sad. <laughs> there is just, <laughs> like, bodies. Um, majority, obviously, evil bodies, but bodies nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh... The, um, I mean, there are rifles, swords, spears, bows and arrows. You got your pick of the gamut here, my friend. You know, I'll take a few rifles. You never know. Sure. Um, there are some M16s and some M4s and M1s you're able to pick up. Uh, what about find... some otherworldly shit from the, the other yeah, dimension? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and, well, otherworldly simply is like just swords and shit. Because oh, they wouldn't have right. that yeah. as militant earthlings. Um, so you can pick up some like some swords, some javelins, some bows and arrows. Um, can you roll? Can you roll investigation for me? Yes, I can. That's an at one. It's lots of dead dead bodies. Damn. On the ground. There sure um, are. Uh. Chance is just standing in the middle of the dead bodies, just like. Are they this all is on? crazy. This wow. is crazy. Uh, hey, I rolled a nat one. I don't yeah, know. I guess that's that. <laughs> that's what happens. Um, so. But yeah, uh, <laughs> Patrick, something you can do if you do choose to wield any of these objects um, so that I don't have to just send you the thing every time, you can always Google fifth edition and then like longbow or fifth edition longsword, and it mm. will give you the like base stats. I'm uh, assuming I just objects. have somewhat of an armory of simple oh, weapons. That's what I'm. That's yeah. I pretty yeah. much any simple weapon you can think of, you have. Okay. Uh, and you also have a couple rifles, which we'll figure out when we get there. Sounds good. 
uh, and presumably enough ammo to last a lifetime. Hey, you um, know what? My pockets are deep. That's right. I infinitely so. Um, all right. Weirdly, so, I feel compelled to put an M&M &M on all of the eyes, like old Greek style. <laughs> Do you like paint <laughs> the eyeballs onto the M and M's? No, just okay. just like just like we, the coins from that, ancient Greece, but, but M and M's. The, that takes up the vast majority of your hour. That's fine. Um, I got my armory. There's nothing else to do. Um. All right. So the hour passes, and everybody meets back up uh, at the base of Hargrove. Uh, Rusty, were you able to do what you wanted to do? Yeah. Uh. Oh, Rusty. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and Lexi, you're able to upgrade Max. All good. Um, you wanna, I can yeah. What's up? Tell you or not, it doesn't matter. No, no, no. All uh, I trust you. Um, it's more exciting for me because I know everything else. So I like getting little surprises. Like I don't fucking remember what chant what Rusty's about to do, but that's fun for me. Um, Ada, if you don't want to RP the rat family. <laughs> <laughs> A rat king emerges from the sewers. <laughs> Rusty, my boy. <laughs> Thousands of rats all tangled together. Uh, no, this does not happen. <laughs> um, uh, Remy Everybody's from left, so they've taken up. over running a restaurant. It's like fucking become yeah, Ratatouille. Remy from Ratatouille emerges. He's like, "Come on, you don't have to. You don't have to do this. You could. You could come cook up with the boys. It's like fucking. It's fucking Christmas." Um, no, Rusty, I assume you're okay not talking to rats you've never met. <laughs> um, uh, we've also already done an hour and a half. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, <laughs> oh, 90 driven. minutes until the first anyway. <laughs> We're on pace, baby. <laughs> We're on pace, baby. <laughs> you have driven and 90 minutes until I believe the first. Excellent. Oh, uh, we had excellent earlier. Damn it. Someone's paying attention. I'm not I'm, ever I'm keeping track. Are you? Are you actually? No, I just heard okay. it earlier and noticed. Okay. Uh, so uh, you are driven by Sam to the Hudson River, um, and you get a glimpse of the boat finally. And it is like a sort of a dingy looking yacht. Um, and on the top deck, you can see through binoculars that Sam has brought that there is just a lifeless Gillian corpse on the, the boat and the orb is sitting on top of him. And there are armed guards posted up uh, on like all corners of the boat and they're just sort of like looking around. How far are they? Sorry. Um, They're about halfway into the river. So like like 800 feet hmm. I would say do any of you not know how to swim I've never tried uh, Max can't really swim I can't really take off my, my trench coat <laughs> this is going great <laughs> Polly did not get the answer he was hoping for <laughs> um, I take off the trench coat I have nothing. It has the pockets. My whole thing is pockets. It's the only thing the you're pockets. wearing. You're not wearing underwear under there. <laughs> the underwear doesn't have pockets. My whole thing is pockets. <laughs> oh, when I you said you pockets. have nothing, you mean you just don't have pockets. I thought you meant that was like the only thing you were wearing, which that would be it's just like just a like trench coat. It's not that comfortable over there. I just pat him on the head. I just pat him right on the just right on the forehead. Just very good. Very good. Uh, and super um, demeaningly, <laughs> Dr. Sam is like, We can get you guys a boat or like jet skis if you want. Are they gonna shoot us if we approach them though? Yes, oh, so that's a problem. You got I like was, a I submarine assume. or something? No, we oh. don't have a submarine in the Hudson Bay. Polly, can anyone throw things 800 feet? Can we grab, grab any like, wait a minute. You know, we have security and they should have built something. What's the what's the weather like? Is it is it moon out? Uh it begins is it still to, cloudy. It, it begins to, to to drizzle slightly, you think? Is um, that is that I can control water level of uh, that, weather? That, 
that is I can control water level of weather. I feel Justin, a puzzle solving coming on. Uh, Justin's <laughs> here. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, he's like, yeah, fine, fucking, I'll do it. Um, and he uh, he goes up to the water and he's like, this is gonna take me a second. Um, so if you could all just stand back, please. I assume our goal is just destroy the boat. I don't know. Maybe we also get the orb or whatever. Okay. Well, it's not really like a, like I either go like fine tune and get and like shoot like one thing or it's just like destruction. Destroy it. You sure? We're cool with Chance that? Chance just surprisingly looks down at this 13-year-old girl that asked for destruction without a hesitation. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure yes, I'm just doing... Killed enough people we've known. Let's just... Just get rid of all traces. Of people that we don't know. <laughs> and Justin goes, Okay, I I'm fine either way. I just want to know what it is I'm doing. Destroy them all. Sink the ship. Okay. Uh, and Justin plunges his hands into the water and the waves begin to slowly undulate out from where he's touching the Hudson Bay. And he's only like touching, you know, the shore. And he's like, God, this is always so fucking exhausting. Uh, and massive waves start to form and then two hands come out of the water and they like just snap the boat in half and squeeze and begins to crush and the guy's like ah, ah! and they're like jumping overboard and <laughs> like some of them are like getting crushed and he shoves the boat underwater how's the orb is it still above water or did it come? uh you do not you're not able to tell the water is now so turbulent um and there is just movement everywhere uh the waves are massive and water is even swelling up a little bit onto the street level and he pulls his hands away from the water and he's like, it's done and dusted. Doubt that's it. We saved the I world. All right, guys, pack it up. <laughs> Thank you for watching Speedrunners and Dragons. Another boss skipped, I guess. <laughs> uh, and then he looks up and he's like, the rift is still there. Can you maybe reach your we, big maybe watery hands the up there? Okay, you tell me to destroy the boat. Now you tell me to get the orb. Which one is it? I don't know. I kind of said we should get the orb before. Yeah, but then the when you just let the group overpower you a moment ago, and you didn't speak up when I asked which if one we were going to do. If you can get the orb to get close to us, I can yoink it. I don't know where it is. I can control water, but like I'm seeing what I'm control. Like I'm, I don't, I don't like. I'm not like I am the water. I'm not like Bruce Leeing this, like where I'm like, you must become water. Like I just. Could you like do a, like one of those Moses things where you like make a path into the bottom and then we could just walk down and get the orb or whatever? I don't know that I can control that much water. Oh, all right. There are limits. About those jet skis. <laughs> Dr. Sam's like, yeah, I can, I can call a guy. We got, what am we I got talking about? There's no suits? guys to call. We're just going to steal some. They're right here. Oh. And it, you look, and it's just the harbor of stuff to, to pick from. Because she's like, there are no guys to call. Stealing. 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 Can I proceed to hotwire as many jet skis as we need that happen to be right by where we are? I mean, sure. We can help. We can... Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. Um, between Lexi and Chance, you're able to get... Uh, Dr. Sam's like, I'm going to go now. <laughs> So I don't, I feel like I shouldn't be here anymore. Um, I'm just nervous and I want to go. Hey, before you go, what's your best guess about how that thing closes up there? I feel like if the orb is destroyed, that's a good shot. Okay. And you didn't say anything either when we were tossing the orb in the bottom of the river. <laughs> She's like, I don't know. You guys seem to have a handle on this whole adventuring thing. I'm just more over of a numbers it. I'm girl. over at a jet ski. Like, yeah, it's going great. It's going great. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor Sam. <laughs> uh, she gets in the car. And she is gone. She's like, she's like, I have presumably a couple of hours to drive as far away as possible. So when whatever happens, happens. I've got like an extra thirty minutes with my family. So I'm gonna do that. I think. 
if that's cool with you guys. Okay, good luck. Anything else you should tell us before you leave? A mentor of mine uh, once said, a worried heart never overcomes adversity. Oh, good thing I'm not worried at all then. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, that guys. good. That did us by. Yeah, I'm not really. I was never good at public speaking. Um, and she runs and, and she's gone. Um, and uh, I think Lexi the... wants to stay with Max. Back. I don't think she wants to put him on a jet ski. So okay, the two of you stay on the shore. Yeah. How are yeah. you divvying up the group, you guys? I'm going out. I'm going out. I'll also go out. I'm gonna hop on Polly's shoulder and go out as well. All right. So Lexi's manning the shore. Um, but Justin, Justin will stay. Justin will stay with you, Lexi. Um, and he's like, I underwater. I'm not really sure. I'm gonna be help. Like it's like a controlling. A, it's hard to explain, but it like feels intrinsic. I'll stay with Lexi. Uh, if you guys need anything to immediately happen, just let me know. I guess. Um, uh, and you pull out from the harbor, uh, uh and start driving out to where the ship was. Uh, and there's sort of oil coming up now um, from the side of the crash uh, or the sinking, I guess. Oh, so we know exactly where it is then. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you are able to, you know, and you start to idle uh, around the crash site. Any and, any spooky uh, men's nearby intent on doing us harm? Uh, there are a couple bodies surface. Huh. Um, it does not appear anybody survived the crash. Uh, could you all roll perception for me? Meaning is. just uh, just the people on the jet skis. But is there anything we can look for around the shore? Uh, Lexi, not a whole lot going on on the shore at the moment. Are we playing like fucking pet cake? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love Good that. slide. I love it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love slide. I tried to play slide with someone recently, and they knew patty cake, but they didn't know slide, and I was very disappointed. We not play? Didn't we play a GQ? Yeah, you and I did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Chance, what's your roll? 16. Uh, Rusty? 20. Mamba? 15. Polly? 13. All right, I mean, you all see it. Um, das Orben? Das Orben ist in eine Manhattan Bay. I just heard a <laughs> um, lot of Germans. <laughs> da. I'm like, mm hmm. Da. <laughs> we've, we've flown to Russia. <laughs> Close. Um, oh, Russia, so, sure. uh, you look down uh, uh, and I mean, the, look, I love New York. I love the Hudson River. It's a little nasty in there. It smells like poop. Mm -hmm. It's a little poopy in there. There's some bodies from horrors untold um, and also poop. Um, anyway, looking down, uh, there is a purple glow from deep beneath that sort of shimmers and pervades. How deep we talking? You have no idea. It's it's can certainly I, deep enough that it's not a clear image. Can I? It's been refracted many times. Try to pocket rocket it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Can you roll a dexterity check for me, please? Sure. Son of a gun. Uh, <laughs> eight. You're you're unable to really get a handle of where it is. You you pull up a seashell. I thought I, well, actually, I put it in my pocket. That's mine. <laughs> you never know. I think Mamba's just going to straight dive on in. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Mamba. Um, Mamba, oh, we've never had to really do swimming. The last time we did swimming was the hotfix one shot in campaign one. Mm -hmm. um, swimming can be handled a few different ways. Uh, Mamba's a big guy and he was trained. I think he's able to hold his breath a pretty good amount of time. Um, and uh, Mamba, obviously, as you swim downwards, uh, the image becomes clearer and clearer. Uh, and you can see that it's at the bottom. You don't think you can dive down to that right now. I open swimming in the Hudson. Ooh, yucky. It do, it do sting. It do sting mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. But you can see it. And it is on top of what looks to be a body. But it's going to be another 50 feet down. Yeah, so it's not anything that I would probably be able to, to last. So I'll uh, <clears throat> I'll swim back up. And uh, I'll relay to the team like how like the distance between like the surface and the orb down at the, you know at the bottom. I think I could try this. Right? What? I could. I could use gravity schmavity on it. 
If I can get close enough. Can you hold your breath that long? I don't know. Probably I could hold it about as long as you. I'm really good at aerobic activity. <laughs> um, I'm going to chime in and I'm going to say, hey, so I learned how to do this recently. I didn't have very much time, but I was able to make one of these. And I give Polly a consumable formula. A consumable formula. <laughs> That's right. This is what Jim mm, Bros. Baby food. This is what Jim Bros do. Jim Bros will like walk up to another guy and be like, hey, bro, I got you this formula. He's like, what is it? And he's like, don't worry about it, man. It'll make you strong. I made it just myself. It in your ass cheek <laughs> yeah. twice a week. Where did you just pull that out from, dude? I didn't see that the whole way over here. Uh, it was in my pocket. <laughs> okay. It's tiny. It's tiny. So what is it? What is it, though? Chance gives a thumbs up to Rusty. I'm, nice. I'm hoping it helps. In what way? Don't it's worry not about it. Or whatever, drink but like, it, I drink do want to know what I'm putting in my it, body. Drink it, drink it, drink I, it, drink it, drink it, drink it. I'm an drink, expert in yeah. first aid. Don't worry about it. What what happens? <laughs> what happens now? So you've basically just been given a dexterity potion. So you have an advantage on ability checks and saving throws that using dexterity. You have ten feet of walking like movement speed extra, but you do have disadvantage on wisdom checks and saving throws. Mm, that, I already had all of that. <laughs> wisdom is not my strong. Suit. Exactly. Okay. Uh, how long does it last? It doesn't actually say. Look, we'll so... say we'll say an hour. Sure. Mm. Um, okay. So, uh, does my movement go. speed apply to my my swimming? Yeah, let's say so. Let's say that this does give you the extra juice needed to, to at least the extra placebo confidence to to get there, <laughs> even okay. though your eyes are like starting to bulge out of your head. Uh, if you if, would you like to swim? Uh, yes, I would. Basically, just gave him cocaine. <laughs> I feel so <laughs> dexterous right now. Um. No, your charisma would go up. Wisdom do be going down wow. though. Um Polly, let's say uh let's let's have you roll a dex saving throw, please, which you do now have advantage on. Yeah. Okay. Okay, first one was three with dexterity. It's a nineteen. Uh you are able to swim to a point where you think you can gravity schmavity this thing. All right. Uh <laughs> That was amazing. <laughs> that was really good. That sounded great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Whatever I do sounds exactly like that. And then <laughs> Splatoon in. Uh and the orb Splatoon. hopefully is plucked free of what I assume is Gillian's body, but I can't really make it out. Mm -hmm. Uh and it it uh starts floating up through the water to me, and I, I try to get a handle on it before I swim back up. Okay, so how much gra you're giving it a look because it's got to go through this dense fluid, so you're giving it a yes. lot of gravity. I'm giving it, I'm giving it minus two, which is the okay. biggest it can be. Right. Um. So it, uh, it begins to float up towards you. Um. And uh, yeah, it's it's almost to you. Right. And uh, now it is I, within grasp. I. I, uh, the fact that you're leaving my no, choice to touch it, <laughs> the way the DM that. is just not saying you, you have it is like... This is very <laughs> awkward. <laughs> you can't know that. You, <laughs> your, your character wouldn't know that. Okay. Um, <laughs> RP it, bitch. <laughs> I'm, I'm grabbing it. I'm grabbing I'm, the I'm thing. I'm grabbing the orb, baby. Uh, at, the, at the very last moment before I touch it, I'm like, maybe it wasn't a good idea to do this underwater, and then I touch it. <laughs> yeah, fair. And the um, audience says, orb. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. It's speedrunners and dragons. Of course they're going to do that. <laughs> Etc. cetera. Um, <laughs> as you, uh, <laughs> that's supposed to be the Waluigi noise. Everyone <laughs> on the couch just <laughs> moans collectively. Yep. Tight lips. Oh, fun here, huh? That's the, that's the Patty mm -hmm. classic. Shakes of the Noise. head that are that, not noticeable. Go back, go back and watch a Patty Couch. This because everybody's favorite, right? Like people love Patty Couch performances because they're like they're like very edgy and like they bring a level of comedy that you don't get to see at GQ very often. Ha ha, lol. I do love them, but go back and watch them for my favorite moments, which are when somebody says something in the audience to try to do a bit for Patrick, and he sits. <laughs> <laughs> I dance for no man. <laughs> That's right. Damn straight you don't. Um, so uh, you grab the orb and uh, 
do I want to do this? Um, I I look at the orb and I'm like, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Could you repeat yourself? <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, uh, yeah, you... your connection's breaking up. Can you? <laughs> uh, you you find yourself uh floating in an ethereal nothingness amongst the stars, um. You're not sure, sure if it's your body or your spirit or both or neither, um, but you're 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 floating in the great beyond almost. There are galaxies distant, shooting stars passing, and there is a lifeless form in front of you, undulating. Are and we it, noticing anything while this is happening? Just quickly. She's been underwater a while. Okay. Lifeless, as in dead, or like otherworldly. Okay. And as it undulates, it, 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 it speaks again more clearly this time, and it says, Who wields the orb? Uh, I look, do I have the orb? You are in holding this space? it. You are holding okay. it. I just say, hello? <laughs> what, where am I? The world between worlds. The Brink space. Was there the a guy named Gillian here before that? In the center of the universe. Was Gillian here a little while ago? A man came and died. Did he do anything bad? I'm from Earth. Do you know Earth? I was not finished talking to him yet. Can I use the power of this orb to stop whatever's happening on Earth? Stop? No. Is what's happening on Earth even a bad thing? Will the people there be harmed? Um, or no. no, it is all re relative and meaningless, for you will rejoin that which made you. And isn't that right? No, actually. I disagree with you. Uh, you feel it begin to fight you mentally. Um... Can you I'm roll? so happy that uh, Holly Lasagna is the interim <laughs> between mankind and this horrifying, <laughs> otherworldly <laughs> monster being. intent on absorbing them. It's great. Uh, can you roll a, a wisdom save? <laughs> I, I no! disagree. I Not disagree. Wisdom. Not wisdom. He That's screams at the eldritch <laughs> god. <laughs> what I have a disadvantage on wisdom as well. Yes, I, I believe that is true. Okay. Gee, thanks, Rusty. Though. Yeah, miracle antidote, my ass. <laughs> Consumable formula is all I said, okay? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, nine. He will roll against you now. Oh, no. <laughs> I wonder if he's wise. 4,000. Maybe. Does um, a got, 32 hit? Uh, does a 450 beat <laughs> nine? Uh, he got 17. Um, even gods are bound by a 20-sided object <laughs> in this world. Um, he rolled low, but that didn't matter. Uh, you feel you are leaving this place. Um, you feel morally defeated in this moment. Um, and you pass out. Uh, and you float to the surface. And you guys just see his limp body hit the top of the water. There he is. Somebody get him. Oi! Oi! <laughs> I wake up! Oi! Uh, he I'm doesn't really move. He's, he's, <laughs> he's drowning. How, <laughs> I, I guess. And my face try down. And, try no, and hoist him down. up on the <laughs> hoist him up on the back of my jet ski. I 
don't know if we can see anything that's happening. Uh, uh, not really. Not really, um, yeah. You, you hoist him up on the back of the jet ski and he, uh, uh, Paul, you... Do I still have the orb? You throw up a little water uh, and the orb floats up in the middle of the jet skis now. I oh, go to nice grab it. it. Uh, Why wouldn't I? I don't <laughs> know. You are able to grab wait, wait, wait. it. Do I see him grabbing it? Does uh, Paulie get a you, moment? You see him going for it. Yeah, you, you, you get a moment. Wait, don't touch that shit. What? what? Uh, 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 Chance, uh, can you roll a dexterity saving throw for me, please? Sure. That would be a uh, 16. You're able to stop yourself from grabbing it. If you want. <laughs> True. Yeah, you know, I probably would heed the advice of the man that touched it, given that it's an otherworldly object that transported us to a different dimension. I, I think that Chance has the wherewithal to maybe <laughs> be cautious in that moment. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the, you, you stop yourself and maybe get back on your jet ski or, or maybe you drove over to it. But regardless, you're all sort of just now looking at it. Holly, what happened down there? Uh, I think I had a dream about maybe it was the Kellogg's monster. Lightning blows out of, the, like a purple lightning strikes the orb out of the rift. Is it? <laughs> and a weird otherworldly hand reaches down and swings a tail and then another hand through the, through the, the portal. And you all see this. The uh, sky. Yes. Big. Uh, unbelievably large. Um, and, uh, suddenly another lightning strike of purple bzz, strikes the orb and it bzz, begins to rise up into the air and spin. And then it... And you hear the voice again. Polly's already heard it, but this is the first time for the rest of you. And it's like in your heads almost. But it bellows um, out Lexi, from... Lexi and Justin will hear it too. Yes. It bellows out from the portal and it says, uh, Not enough yet. yet we need an avatar. And then um, the lightning strikes through the orb and down into the water. And then up out of the water, a lifeless Gillian's body just floats near the orb. And then the orb starts to break and fuse into his body and his blood and veins begin to glow purple and then the orb or the the portal opens more and another lightning strike strikes gillian and as it happens uh the water parts and everything at the ground is just and thanks justin uh, <laughs> not justin <laughs> uh but maybe um and so. lexi lexi you see justin is like that ah, was not me um, Do we get flung since we're right there? Uh, you all begin to fall oh. um, down into what is now a chasm uh, where there was the Hudson River. Um, and Can you uh, help them? Uh, Justin's like, yep, on it. And he runs uh, and he pulls a water bottle out of his pocket and like starts draining the water and makes like a sled out of the water. And it begins to float through the air and he skates on it. And he begins grabbing uh, you guys as you're falling. And then he like takes a bit of the water and throws it at the quickly receding water wall and is able to pull some of that water back and basically fastens like a rope of water that you are all able to grab. Uh, and you all land down in the chasm uh, together somewhat safely. And Lexi's like, uh, <laughs> uh, that's okay. And the Gillian body now <laughs> that's that's good. And he looks down at you and he <laughs> lands in the crater. His music is so perfect. And he stands and feels his hands and his arms, and he says, This is a good body. You see, this, this is why I do what I do, is to create fine specimen like this, and take it back into the hole. Take it back where it belongs. With me, it's not. 
malicious. It's not bad. It's right. It's just. Won't you join me? No. Come back into the fold. No. You're just talking normally. She probably can't hear. No. Yeah. You're like, what's going on? <laughs> um. And uh, you see some like blackish purple energy leave his hands, and he says, "Well, then why don't we play around a little bit while I get used to this, and maybe I'll use your energy in order to really set myself free." And we are going to roll initiative when we get back from break. Uh, everybody, do not go anywhere. I'm going to play some quick ads. We're going to go to a quick break. Get up, stretch your legs, use the restroom. I'm about to piss my pants, so I got to go. Um, but uh, we will be right back with more Speedrunners and Dragons right after this. And welcome back to Speedrunners and Dragons Campaign 3 Finale. Before we get back into things, which, by the way, we just left our gamers on the precipice of what might be sort of a final boss-looking type deal, an encounter with some kind of puppeted version of Gillian. Um, but really quickly, before we do that, I have an announcement to make. Obviously, thank you so much to everybody who has already ordered uh, merch from the Tantrum site, exclamation merch in the chat. Obviously, we have this wonderful die roller. We have a die mat, uh, as well as the t-shirt. Um, I, a lot of people have been posting that they've gotten their t-shirts and their die rolling things already, which is amazing. Um, the shirts did sell out last week, which thank you, the initial run, but pre-orders are now back open as of two hours ago. Um, so you should be able to pre-order shirts now if you are looking to get one and you were unable to in the initial run. Uh, so please do go to tantrumcollectibles.com, the Speedrunners and Dragons page specifically. Uh, and uh, the, the shirts are fucking awesome. Um, and uh, I can't recommend this stuff enough. The die rollers are really cool uh, and it's really worth your time. Um, it helps support the show. Uh, and if nothing else, it's just a neat little thing to remember the show by. There you go. Um, and that's all for announcements. Um, so we're getting back into it. Uh, everybody, please roll initiative for me. And uh, you're going to fight this guy. God darn it. Give me that sweet, sweet battle music. It's on, Lexi's baby. so far away. Yes, you are. <laughs> uh, Polly. I'm helping! 22. Rusty. Nine. Lexi. 17. Chance. 14. <clears throat> Mamba. 11. All right, Paula, you're first. He is 30 feet from you and looking crazy. Looking crazy? Um, all right, I'm feeling like maybe I shouldn't start my one minute timer till I die for the insta kill. I don't know if that's going to work on this guy. <laughs> um, a question about that, by the way, before we get into it. If I, if that timer reaches zero, is my character straight dead or knocked unconscious as if I've been brought to zero HP? Straight dead. Okay. And Polly intrinsically knows this. Yes. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, well, Polly's feeling like he wants to flex his new muscles that Jameson gave him. It feels appropriate to use Jameson's weapon against this guy. Uh, yeah. So Polly is going to turn his bracelet and say, "Hell's agent" for the first time, and then. See what happens. Uh, the scythe appears into your uh, dominant hand, and uh, you grasp it, and it, it feels as intrinsically normal and easy to wield as a pencil. Um, it, it is it is a part of you, uh, and it feels powerful. So that is an action. Does that mean that I have no more actions, or can I use it also this turn? You can use it. Why not? All right. Uh, I will use some of my movement speed to get within 10 feet of this person. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to try to attack with the scythe. Okie dokie. Uh, are you going to give me the multi-attack as well? Uh, no. Only because this is your first time using it, I'll, I'll give you the action, but I won't give you the, uh, the multi-attack multi on this. No multi -attack. That's fair. Okay. Uh, that is... Probably gonna hit 10. Does not hit. All right, a, a big whiff in front of this guy. It's your first time using it. Even though it feels intrinsic, it's still difficult and you swing this really unwieldy large thing and it 
He ducks underneath it. All right, I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay right there. Okay, great. Uh, up next is Justin. And Justin, I really should have put his character info closer to the bottom. Um, he is going to use some of the aforementioned water and shoot it towards Gillian with an angry rage. Uh, that does not hit. Multi-attack. Mm. That also does not hit. So he misses in his blind raid. And then the water comes back to him. Uh, and that is his turn. Uh, Lexi, you are up next. Um, how, how far away am I? <laughs> Max, uh, teleport. Uh, um, like 70 feet down and like 800 feet away. <laughs> I, I mean, there's no way I can't get to anybody. Get on that jet ski, girl. I can't. You're down. I would just fall. Any mopeds lying on the street? Hey. Um, we'll say that Justin, with his movement uh, on the end of his turn, starts going up towards Lexi to retrieve her. Um, I, I and... just gotta. I'm gonna. Um, okay. Then she can at least. Uh, she could plan, but it'd be better with everybody else. So I guess she will. Nope, that's within sixty feet. She's gonna hang out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cheers. Um, you'll you'll be there probably next turn. This um, one doesn't have a distance for exploit weakness. It's a bonus action to assess a creature's weakness. Okay. Um. Yeah. Sure. Uh. Do you roll for that? Use intelligence bonus instead of strength or no for decks to attack rolls and damage rolls for one minute against this creature. Okay. Is that just for you or is that for the, the players? Just as well? for me at the moment. Okay, great. Then yeah, that works. Cool. Um I'm just like <laughs> I think I see yes, there's a massive eyeball on his back, I think. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh I can get my sword out, I'll hold on to it and stab <laughs> him three times. Take <laughs> Crouch stab. Deku nut, crouch stab, crouch stab. You got a hook um, shot onto the back. Hold it. Right, 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 right. This is Morpheal or Argarok we're talking about. Couple uh, slashes. Chance, it is your turn. Uh, I would like to chuck a ninja star at this mofo. Yeah, sure. Let's see. Ooh. Um, hmm. Where are the stats? Uh oh. Maybe if you uh, offer it an M&M, &M, it'll come to love humanity and let us live. <laughs> Stop you making fun of my M&Ms. <laughs> uh, let's see. So that'll be a... I'm bad at math. 14? That does not hit. Oof. Weef. Hey, weef. I'll use, a, I'll use a bonus action to taunt. Okay. Taunt the eldritch being. <laughs> Yeah, what do you what do you say to this timeless yeah. creature? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> what what happens to him? What? Uh you may use your bonus action to taunt a creature. The creature must have an intelligence score of at least six and be yeah. able to see and hear you. The creature must make a wisdom saving throw of DC plus eight plus your proficiency bonus plus charisma, so seventeen. On a okay. failed save, the target has disadvantage on its next attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. It fails. Disadvantage on next attack roll, ability check, or... It, it can't saving. believe that a lowly creature like you is actually trying to stand up to it. It's yeah, so yeah. En enraged by this. I turn around and start slapping my ass like a monkey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you dance for no man. That's mm -hmm. right. <laughs> um, it's an eldritch horror. <laughs> it is not a man. Yeah. Um, We're excellent. still good. Uh, after chance is Mamba. Sure. I like using the new weapons that I just attained at the very end of last episode. So a dash up to him with the Vorpal Blade. I love that name, by the way. Uh, and let us roll to hit. Lex is going to get there and it's going to be dead. By the time she arrives. <laughs> uh, that's a, a non-nat 20. Oh. Yeah. Stinky. Yeah. <laughs> um, Non-nat 20 hits. All right, and was that two d eight? So first uh, for fourteen damage. 
Nice. Now we'll do the multi attack. Swing. Does 15 hit? 15 does not hit. Okay, that's fine then. Um, you, on the first swing of the blade, you feel the voice within the blade not speak to you, but you feel a connection with it. It knows this energy and it wants to kill it. I love, I, I love the Vorpal Blade. Oh, it's, yeah, almost it's, it's, it's almost you. as good as shielding. It's almost as good as shielding. It's close. I love you too, Mamba. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Much better than that Jader guy. Uh, Uriel sent them. <laughs> is that your turn, Mamba? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, it is Puppet Gillian's turn. PG for short. PG. Oh, well, I have written his... his Name is Collegrio's Puppet Gillian, so CPG, I guess. <laughs> uh, what's he gonna do? All right, so the first thing he's gonna do is take a legendary action at the end of Mamba's turn and change Brinks, because uh, he can do everything Gillian can do. Anything you can do, I can do better. Um, and you know what? He's going to start with... Oh, that would be cool. <laughs> There's just so many... He has so many options, it's actually insane. Uh, I have a question. Yes, I have an answer. Gillian has been dead. Yes. And uh, when Jameson... When people die, I assume their brink leaves them. Oh, uh, you can't retcon this. <laughs> no, no, I just wonder. <laughs> I just, I just, I feel um, like yeah, it. Yeah, this is a great question. Uh, because, like, if Gillian suddenly has all of his Brinks again, that would be very, I mean, it, it's your choice, and Brinks I assume you want to do that. into the orb when he touched it right before he died, and now Thank he you, has Daddy. them back. Thank you, Daddy. You're welcome. <laughs> you say he put them in there, and then they so came back to him. he didn't put them in there intentionally, but the genuine canon is the orb, and I don't want to spoil something you'll find out later, um, in this episode, but suffice to say, when someone dies for the orb, their ev their soul is subsumed I, into the orb. Uh, so I was like, his brink had to have left him, but I guess that's we why it's used as a store to summon Collegrio because it's just amassing brink energy. Um, mm. I'm being nice and not making it so that he could use every brink ever stored in the orb because potentially many of the sacrifices and offerings from Zethus would have had abilities. Uh, and I could have just written like, uh, insta-kill player. Um, <laughs> uh, so no. Uh, but yes, great question. Good luck, everybody else. Excellent question. Excellent question. Yeah. Um, he is first going to use intelligent design and craft a great blade. Uh, out of the ground, this massive metallic, like from the, 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 the metal of the subway, of the path trains that go underneath to go to Hoboken, New Jersey. He has pulled a great two-handed sword that sits on his shoulder. That was on Mamba's turn. He changed into that brink. He uses it. Now he is going to switch brinks on his own turn, uh, and he will switch into... Erupting Provocation. Uh, and then he is going to attempt to strike Mamba with the sword. Um, and it's this weird, like, there are symbols on the blade that you've never seen before. They are some ancient, unknowable script. Uh, and there are figures on it and strange carvings that he has made into this blade he's chosen to create. Um, and he has disadvantage on this, correct? From the taunt? Mm hmm Mamba, does a 16 hit you? No. All right, he swings, getting used to his now human form, and you're able to dodge it masterfully. Uh, and that is his turn. Uh, I'm gonna use a... Yeah, when he when he misses an attack against me, I'm going to use a bonus action dodge roll. I'm just going to uh, be outside of his attack of opportunity, maybe about like five feet to okay. to his uh, backside. Sure, Abs yeah, you're able to flank him um, with a very well timed Dark Souls esque roll. 
Uh, wonderful. Love it. This guy's light rolling. This guy's light rolling. How many frames of invincibility is that? Intangibility maybe is a better word. I don't know. Yeah. Um, anyway, after Gillian is Rusty. Oh, hi. That's me. Oh, hi. Um, I'm going to use intuition. So I roll a d20 and that determines how many questions I get to ask you. Okay. Let's see here. 15. So on results between 10 and 20, I get to ask two questions. Okay. Uh, actually, hold on. 15 plus wisdom, 16. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, first question. What is the most dangerous thing in this situation? Uh, you sense that he probably has abilities that Gillian did not have. Like abilities specific to Calegrio that he might be able to use. Okay. Um, and second question, is there any danger that we haven't noticed yet? No. Okay. So that was my intuition. I'm going to use my turn to do that. And then as a bonus action, I'm going to provide help to Polly. That is my turn. Bless. Move to his shoulder as well if I wasn't anywhere close to that. Bless. Papa Bless. <clears throat> Get the Bless emotes in the chat room. Please. Just means you have advantage on your next attack, Polly. Um, okay. Uh after Rusty is that's a we did a full turn, guys. Let's go. Let's I go. did the most. <laughs> it is Polly's turn. All right. Uh mm. with with Rusty back on my shoulder, I feel like I can do anything. Mm. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take another big swing with Hell's Agent. So sure this time I'm gonna hit him. That is a dex And you get advantage. Oh, true. Yes, thank you. I'm going to actually use one of my adrenaline dice, which I can add uh, add to my roll before I know the results. Okay, that is a 16. That hits. Finally. Finally. Um, so I do 2 You got 10. that. 2d10 slashing damage with this thing. That is 12 plus dex is 16 damage. Nice. Uh, and I guess I get a multi-attack with this now that I have not summoned it this turn. Yeah. I buy a dice. Yeah, it's gone. Goodbye, it's gone dice. Uh, this one does not hit. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, as you slice at him with the scythe, uh, you cut away, not like blood, but like purple energy and it leaves behind like a chasm of purple energy in him that reforms skin quickly thereafter it isn't I, like uh, it's healing him he's just like as i do this swing i'm like gillian if you're in there i don't think this is what you wanted dude you better come back no gillian only true zool only zool <laughs> <laughs> the key master. <laughs> um, God, I love that movie. Uh, all right, is that your turn, Polly? That's all I got. Okay. Uh, Justin is arriving at Foo's location. What's up, babe? Uh, hop on. Like 800 feet? Yeah, why not? He's like, he caught those guys that were falling <laughs> to their death, so... Um, He's like, all right, hop on. Let's go fight the apocalypse. Uh, can you bring Max? Mm, sure. Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> We're here. Uh, he <laughs> begins He begins to fly you back, but you're not oh. there yet. Um, uh, I'm going to, we're going to, we're going to plan. We're going to plan. I'm not going to have time to plan with the rest of the team. So okay. on our way back, we're going to come up with a, I don't know, whatever a seems. Killer plan. <laughs> I'm going to hit him. <laughs> really hard yeah i have some new i have some new tricks up my sleeve with I max got some new stuff yeah so uh um you have either you can choose either attack rolls saving throws or ability checks okay um you can activate this benefit once in the next minute to gain a bonus or intelligence modifier 
those roles. Sweet. Um. So, uh, so Justin yeah, just... has plan. I'm writing that down so I don't forget. It's like a bonus. Sweet. Is that your turn as well, Lexi? I mean, that was, yeah. uh, was something we could do on the way. There you go. Um, all right, that was Justin and Lexi, which means we are at chance. Hello. Oh, the desk is rising. Mm hmm. Um. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'll just try and hit him with another ninja star. I think that's the best option at the moment. Okay. Man, I am not rolling today. Holy moly. Kind of what, had a great, what a great day point. to not roll well. <laughs> uh, It'll that's going to be... Yeah, 14 again. Does not hit. Yeah. Well, I'm going to I'm going to use my bonus action to turn around, slap my ass and say I'll get you next time. You're taunting him again? Uh-huh. Okay. I don't have a limit on taunts, I don't think. So <laughs> There should be. <laughs> I, uh he's going to try to uh resist that. Uh he got 17. That resists is 16. Okay, I think. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll Damn. set your limit at five per long okay, rest. Okay, so that's two. Um, okay. Uh, after chance is Mamba. Yep. I just add that, like, Lexi's, she's gonna char start charging. Sure. Yeah, I figured as much. I figured as much. Great, cool. So, you know, I'm not gonna just say it later. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mamba, my boy. Yep, yep. Uh, let us, let's see, I flanked behind him. <sighs> Uh, what's the what is like the weather situation like around like it, uh, around our arena? It's raining. It's raining. Pretty dark. Shadows are cast, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I can use my brink. All right. All right. You, much, yeah. I'm gonna take There's advantage of the purple thing. That is true. That is creating yeah. lots of light that is casting shadows all across. Oh, absolutely. So uh, yeah. Since Occasional we did dramatic play, lightning bolts. Yeah. Exactly. Oh yeah. True. There are dramatic Ooh, lightning bolts all around this arena. Oh, well, all right then. Uh, I will uh, attempt to, you know, turn my watch, call, cast my brink, call out the shadow pool, and uh, now the puppet must make a DC 17 dexterity saving through. Pass. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, no, that, 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 that's pretty much it. That's all I, that's all I wanted to do. Oh that's my all God. I wanted to do, man. No, but seriously, yeah, my turn. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll use help as a reaction. Cause I okay. can do that. Um, what, that? what does that do? Well, I'm actually going to use teamwork to kind of pile onto that. I can do this once per long rest. Um, a creature that is allied with me within 60 feet, Mamba, sure. gets one weapon attack as a reaction to me using teamwork. So now you can weapon attack swing, to kind of make swing, up for it. Borg Bull swing. Blade, baby! Borg Bull Blade! Well, we see Mamba's pissed. And, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. well, oh, he's pissed. Hadok is pissed inside of Puppet <laughs> Gillian right now. <laughs> All right, so you got, you got two pissed mother... All right, well... <laughs> Let, let us attempt to swing uh, for a 24. And I'm pretty sure that hits. Ooh, so yeah, we're going to take this really spicy 2d8 plus my proficiencies and make that, uh, oh, uh, 15 damage. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He looks over to the rat. Like, strike with the beautiful gives him a Morpho thumbs blade. up. Thanks, rat. Just to give everybody a reminder of what it looks like, I'm going to send Richard a picture of the Vorpal Blade. That's what I'm going to do. Keep Richard on his toes. Don't want Is to it not like the, the blue sword from Final Fantasy X? That's what, no, that's it's, what... it's red with a black hilt. Oh, shit. Where is this thing? I It's on my computer somewhere. Uh, Open file location. Boom. Send file. Boom. All right. It's a cool looking thing. Um, and for those of you who are astute and remember, it was, it's possessed by the, the spirit of Ureneth, uh, only son of the god Eurelian, who is the chief villain of campaign two. 
Um, is that your turn, Mamba? It's my turn. Okay. Uh, the 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 purple energy is now pulsating uh, on um, on puppet Gillian, uh, having used erupting provocation. Uh, okay. After Mamba, it is Calegrio's turn. He cannot switch Brinks at the moment, so he is going to swing at Polly. His weapon also has reach. That doesn't hit. That hits. Polly, does a 19 hit you? It's a tie. Tie goes to the roller. Yep. That's my um, home rule. Is always. this slashing damage? Yes. I, it gets <laughs> reduced by my constitution. I was going to okay, do it. Okay, okay, okay. I cannot be slashed. <laughs> 18. Okay. God, this song slaps. <laughs> it's almost like Toby Fox is pretty talented. Um... All right, non-trans, yeah, it's what I had, okay? Um, okay, I love how when Richard says things in the chat and I respond, YouTube is gonna be like, what the fuck just happened? Uh, you know, in, in in hindsight, it probably would have been smart to have the chat on screen the whole, all three seasons, but you know, too late, S stupid. Um, uh, yeah, I guess that's his turn, that's his turn. Um, okay. So after Puppet Gillian is Rusty. All right. Uh, oh. Actually, before, I just, I just want to, like, yell out to the team, because, uh, was it Mamba, when he fought Gillian before, had dealt with erupting provocation, yes. so I feel like he would know how, you know, yeah. like, how oh, it yeah. worked at that point. So he's just going to yell out, if you're going out on the offensive, keep your distance! You know, erupting, you know. Okay! At least 10 foot minimum. Oh, um, sorry, sorry, I Rusty, haven't go moved. Ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm staying okay. right here. I'll be there eventually. They overshot and killed themselves. Why is there a small voice in the distance? <laughs> Lexi and, and Justin overshoot and crash into the ground. <laughs> oh, obliterated. Um, First time she goes, Rusty... and everybody's like, <laughs> <laughs> After Rusty is... I, oh, I haven't gone yet. <laughs> oh, gone sorry. Yet. <laughs> Please go. Please go. I know I'm really small, but I'm still here. Um, I have to say that to people all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to go for a Hail Mary because I feel like there's not really any other opportunities for me to do this. I'm going to stare him dead in the face and turn my bracelet and say Modern Ooh. Prometheus and see what happens. Uh, what does he roll? Uh, against my intelligence, which is 17. Okay. Saving throw, yeah? Yes. 19. Nothing happens. <laughs> uh, then I will use my bonus action to be helpful again to Polly. And that will be the end of my turn. Sure. Uh, such is the life of a support character. Indeed. Polly, it is your turn. Okay, um, if I wanted to use Gravity Schmavity, do I have to dispel the axe, the scythe? Yes. Okay. Can I do those wrapped into one action? Or does it like take an action to dispel it and then I have to... The way I did it with Arello... Well, he never used lift like in proper combat. Um... I'll say yes. Can dispelling be a bonus action? Sure, yeah. Calling is an action, but dispelling as a bonus action, I'm fine with that, because that that steals your bonus action if you were going to use it for something else. I'm fine with that. Right. Okay. And it's like it, both of them are concentrations, so I wouldn't be able to have them both going on anyway. So. Correct. Um, I'm not going to do that right now. I just wanted to know for the future. Okay, Thank you. sure. Um, I'm just going to swing uh, at Calegrio again uh, okay. with my axe. I feel very helped right now by my small friend on my shoulder. I have I have advantage, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, the first one is a twenty something. Hit. Okay. 
This does. Uh, five, nine damage. Okay. And then the second roll for the multi attack is a 25. Hit. Ah, damn. Uh, those are some big rolls. And this is, ooh, that's 10 and a 5, 15, 19 damage on the second one. Woo! Very nice. I love Danny's turns. Yeah. Playing bones with himself. <laughs> <laughs> Playing his own little game. Um, Somehow I was given damage. a massive death scythe today, so. True. Uh, is that your turn? Uh, yes, that is my turn. Okay. Uh, after you, Polly, is Justin. Uh, Justin arrives the rest of the way, and Lexi and Justin are now in the fray. How Yay. close are we? Um, you are 30 feet away. He lands you right by chance. Um, Hi. and, uh, Hi. that's gonna be Justin's turn, so, uh, cause, yeah, that's a lot of movement, so we'll Big say dashing. it's a dash. <laughs> yes, uh, like so, 1,600 feet. <laughs> Lexi, I... your turn. <laughs> Fine. Yeah. Ah, here I am. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay. Okay. So I've been storing up a little bit. <clears throat> uh. Can you give me? Do, remind me of the situation of where's where's everybody yeah, at right so now? Yeah. So he's like thirty feet in front of you, and right. I believe in between the two of you, to some degree, is Polly, uh, who is probably slightly to the right or slightly to the left. Um. And Rusty's on his shoulder. And then Mamba is behind him, slightly to the right. Okay. And we're on, like, the bottom of the river. It's flat. Yeah. And stinky. This, just stinky. that, and there's, like, uh -oh. walls of water around. Yeah. Smells bad. Cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. just... And fish are, <laughs> like, flopping in the ground. <laughs> Bold of okay. you to assume that there are living fish in the Hudson River. <laughs> <laughs> There are people flopping around. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna subject analysis All of this them turn. Have cement shoes for some reason. <laughs> Weird. Must be in right now. Um, so as an action, yeah. um, I'm going to learn its damage immunities, resistances, and vo or vulnerabilities. So uh, it is immune to being frightened or charmed. Um, or tricked, I assume. Yeah. Uh, it can be taunted. No, it can be I don't, uh, uh, tricked. It must be a D20 modern condition. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't have any damage immunities. It can't be frightened or what? Can't be frightened or charmed. Okay. Okay. And no, no immunities. Correct. Okay. And then my next attack against it is a crit. Okay. <laughs> Sick. Huh? Uh, what would Max like to do? Um, <clears throat> Max is going to, uh... Initiating beat that ass protocol. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Initiating um, BTA. Fuck him up. As an action, he's going to use exoskeleton form and essentially Iron Man me. Whoa, oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> cool. So, uh, so yeah, that skeleton form will, it can either be a hindrance or a benefit and who it's wrapping around. Um, but since it's wrapping around Lexi, it's going to, um, give her advantage on saving throws and ability checks using strength or dexterity. Speed is increased. Any damage it's split. Cool. Pretty cool. Mild That's upgrade. Cool. Pretty neat. Small upgrade. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, you are high level. I mean, you're like level eight. Uh, so it makes sense. Um, but saving up those points, baby. Is that your turn? Uh, yeah. Sweet. Uh, after uh, Lexi, mm. you want to move? I don't know if you can... Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. I don't know if you can do anything else. I assume that would be, like, the action. Yeah, I think that's his action. Okay. Uh, Mamba, it's your turn. It's my turn. I'm going to uh, swing. I think so. No, no sorry, it's no. chance. I apologize. But then you... Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, um... <laughs> Let's see. Let me pull up my inventory. It's a bit of a paragraph at this point. Yeah, understandably. Can I do my one try of my super pockets move where I can make something appear anywhere from 
my stolen inventory. Yeah. Okay. For a reminder, I have seven rolls of a six-sided die. I have to roll a one and a six at least once, or else it doesn't work. It's chance, you know? Sevens. Yeah. It's yeah. chance. Yeah. 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 So I'm going to do it first, and then if it works, I'll tell you what I'm, what I'm going to do after it. Okay, after I roll. sure. Yeah, you don't want to spoil it. I don't want to spoil it. Yeah. It's a fun idea. That's a one. We got a one. Okay, I just have to roll. You have a really good chance to roll a six. Get the blesses in the, in the chat. Five. Oh, That's three. three. You get three more rolls. Four. Five. Come on. Six. Last chance. No. no. <laughs> Never lucky. I was going to make every single M&M I had appear inside of this thing. <laughs> but sadly, it was not meant to be. Can you do it more than once for a long rest? No, just once. It's too uh -huh. powerful. It's too powerful. That would have been nah, the best. We'll, we'll give you another try. We'll give we, you another try. You're gonna let me telefrag again? I'm gonna I'm gonna let you have another try this long rest. All right. Okay. So not not now, but on another. Well, try. obviously, yeah. Um. Do over. I get <laughs> Mulligan. <laughs> Mulligan. Uh, I shot? will use my second action to inspire Mamba. And that is, again, a uh, D6 that you can use to... Blah, 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 I got blah. two inspirations. Uh, wait until... You can wait until after you roll a D20 before deciding to use it. And I'm trying to see what you can use it on. I think it's ability checks, saving throws, attacks, the standards. It's a it's an inspiration mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Um, Thank you. And then whatever you roll heals you for that much when you use it. So it's a little different than the one you have already. It'll heal you oh. for what you roll. Mamba feels incredibly inspired, but also confused because he yeah, hasn't um, been able to get a read on you all fucking season. <laughs> I can't do anything, but you can. Go Mamba. That's probably rah, the rah, most Siskumba. biblically accurate thing you've ever fucking said. <laughs> now I'm sad, but you can do it. That was really mean. I'm just trying to help. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's my turn. Okay. Uh, so it is now Mamba's turn. He's inspired. Also, goddamn pissed, but right he is. He's inspired. So yeah, we, we, all right. Let's let's uh, let's try to use this thing to its full potential. Oh, the nice. Vorpal? Richard's Richard's got Mamba holding the Vorpal Blade in the character. Oh, that's sick. Let's go. The Vorpal Blade. Like, look at it. Anyways, we go ahead and swing because I do want. To, I want to get that. That, that 20s. Yeah, so I know bad. what you want. I know what you want. I know what I want. That will be for 17. It hits. All right. I'll just do the, uh, the 2d8 for 18 damage. Ooh. Now multi attack again. Did you do it? I, I will screen share the fuck out of this right now. <laughs> did you do it? We did it. Okay, so those of you uh, who uh, had campaign two oh uh, uh, as a thing you watch may remember that a special ability of the Vorpal Blade is if you roll a crit, if you roll a 20, you decapitate the creature that you are attacking. If you die in the Gillian, do you die in real life? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> if the creature cannot be decapitated, they take extra bonus super damage. So what's the verdict? Um, That's the technical term for it. <laughs> uh, you are able to decapitate him. Um, you slice the, I mean, first you slice his chest with the first strike, and then you slice his head clean off and he catches it. I pocket rocket it. <laughs> <laughs> I want another head. Oh I miss my head. <laughs> Give it back. <laughs> I will give you this reaction moment, Patrick. I, I, it is out of turn, but I will give it to you because it's so wonderful. I want that head. I want that head. 
<laughs> fucking John the Baptist ass. <laughs> fucking what was Give that? Give me King his ben? head. I want that man's head on a silver platter. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, you are able to pocket rocket the noggin, holding it by the hair. Um, and uh, it is still alive as purple energy shoots out of its neck. Uh, and I'm gonna have you add the extra damage for me, please, Bobby. So double the damage dice, add the normal modifier, and then roll the beheading dice. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so like normal crit plus whatever beheading dice normal is. I'm, do crit. I'm doing that to his lips, by the way. Double the damage dice plus normal double modifier. Double the damage dice plus the normal modifier. Oh my God. I can't the, believe I've been and then the crit dice. And then just the normal beheading okay. dice. Okay, so the five idea. Oh my guys. Let's go. Want to see? Four, no. 52 damage. 52 damage. God baby. damn. All right. How much? 52, 52 damage. Woo. I mean, his head's gone, so obviously you know this, but he's not looking great. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, is he still speaking from the head? Does he the still head? have eruption procced? Does he what? Does he still have eruption procced? Yeah. Fuck. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh -oh. I'm gonna keep it track, baby. I'm uh -oh. gonna keep it track. I have doomed this. He's like, get away now. He's uh -oh. Does that affect in a radius? You'll see. Uh, <laughs> okay. You'll see. Uh, so um, that's Mamba. Mamba, is that your turn? That, that is my turn. So uh, it is now Gillian's turn. And just to be clear, Chance, you didn't pocket the head. You're just holding it. That's correct. Okay, you can't change that. You can't change that decision. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't say that I pocketed it. That, um, that doesn't seem like something I'd do in the moment. Uh, Mine. <laughs> I want to keep this forever. <laughs> Oh, that's a lot of math. I don't Stop like saying that. big numbers, please. It's a lot of math. The blue skies knows. Oh no, he's doing math. <laughs> oh, Non-gravity related oh, math. Boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, when you do 131 damage in two turns, uh, oh, no. you make erupting provocation do 66. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Um. So uh, his head calls out erupting provocation and looses it, and it has two points of contact. Uh, so it bursts from both the head and from the body. Um, and uh, anyone within 10 feet of the head or the body. Uh, oh, it's you... not split the damage? No. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. You take 66 damage. Oh, I'm dead. Not 6d6, six but 6-6. Six, six. Yeah. So what kind of damage? Brink. Oh. <laughs> um, so that is, if my if my intuition is correct, that would be everyone. I want to be I, 10 feet from chance, right? Can I be 800 feet away again? <laughs> I want to be within 10 feet of chance. Um... So Chance definitely takes it. As uh, as the head is starting to emanate light, I just look at it and go, it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mamba definitely takes it. I think Polly might be fine. I I mean, I was within scythe range of the body. Got reach. Which is five feet. That's a big yeah. ass. Uh, yeah, and it's you got reach. move away. Uh, it does have reach, but the reach is an extra five feet. Which means you could conceivably be exactly ten feet away. I and mean, that's where I was, but I mean, ten feet, I probably still take it, right? Have him take half. He gets the fringe. It singes him. I I'll mean, take Justin, it Justin and Lexi definitely take the damage. Take uh, all sixty-six. Yes, but you okay. can split the damage between you and Max. Yeah, we're dead. Okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, ugh. Um, all right, so uh, how death in D&D &D works, just to remind everybody. Uh, unless you take enough damage in one hit to do all of your health twice, you are just unconscious. So if 66 is more than or equal to double your total max health, 
you die instantly and your character is forever dead. Is that I'm the case sleeping. for anyone? No. I have 48, so I'm sleeping. Rusty, I am nervous. <laughs> What is the what is the verdict? Thirty three is how much health you would have to well, have more than. Right, I guess I'm asking what is the verdict? Are Polly and I hit? I think you're gonna take some blowback, but not the full hit. That's my feeling. Okay, tell me what the blowback is. <laughs> tell me what the blowback is. <laughs> um, half. So thirty three. Thirty three. I'm still alive. Are you awake? I'm awake. Uh, Mamba, what's up, Chief? I'm also gonna take 33 because uncanny dodge reaction. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, nice. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, so that's 66 to Chance, 66 split half and half to Lexi and Max, 66 to Justin. He's also dead. How much total health does he have? Didn't think to check that. Well, if oh, he's alive, dead I mean, but if, alive. If Max takes. 33 we can split it like that i don't know if we have to take the whole 66 or if he can take 33 and i can take i think because he if... takes 33 you take 33 okay then lexi's still up okay probably just dropped oh. off of her i guess okay yeah oh, he wow. takes 33 you take 33 okay so I'm, she's still I'm up way passed out <laughs> <laughs> I'm sleeping with the fishes it's probably that are flopping a good around fucking me. thing that she just used that. yeah <laughs> yes Yes, because your companion Chance is a goddamn idiot. Oh. Um, uh, so yeah, <laughs> so this blast, <laughs> just pure brink energy exploding in a purple mass out of the head and the body. Uh, and you're all just like, just crushed by this energy. Um, and, uh, you know, it's overwhelming. Chance falls unconscious um, and drops the head and uh, Collegrio goes and retrieves the head and refastens it to himself. Um, and uh, he is going to change Brinks into... What does he want? I don't think he can heal. Let's really check out. Um... He's gonna change into capital punishment. Or actually, no, 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 no. He's gonna change into virtuous beast, uh, which is Alencia's brink. Uh, and he uh, wipes some of his like purple blood onto the sword he's wielding. Um, and then he is going to attempt to strike Mambo, or he's gonna attempt to strike Polly with said sword. That does not hit. Uh, he will go again. That does not hit either. Because 17 is armor class, right? There. Me? 19. 19. Okay, well, definitely doesn't hit. Um, okay, that is his turn. Uh, up next is Rusty. Okay. Um... Oh, also, Justin is also in con unconscious. So it's not just you, Chance. R Justin is also out. Oh, boy. Well, uh, that hurt a lot. Um still alive though that's cool that's pretty poggers um how far away how far back are chance and um justin 30 feet i hadn't moved okay right next to me uh then i'm gonna take a hop i don't know how how does healing work when they're unconscious or does it uh, not any healing stabilizes them to one hp okay great uh then that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna rush back to chance and use my one of my medicinal dice just to do that. <laughs> Where's the head? <laughs> he, Me he put every it night. back. He put it back. Uh... On. <laughs> <laughs> hey yo! <laughs> uh, that was good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Break skateboard, etc. Yep. Um. Yeah. So you're stable at one health. Excellent. Um, feeling then, very stable in feeling every every really way. Good. What else? Pogger, I, 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 I wake up and go, oh, poggers. <laughs> <laughs> um, bonus Rusty action. just goes poggers. Be helpful yes. to chance. Ability check. Attack roll. Advantage. Thank you. Bless. Um, okay. Uh, after Rusty, we loop back to Polly. Uh, all right. 
He's, uh, I'm just, I'm just Man, gonna this keep hitting him with a, my scythe. This team is a far cry from those two, the, the group of hooligans that could hardly take down an armed guard. You sure. guys are killing it. Polly, go right ahead. All right, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna great. keep swinging with Hell's Agent. Feels like my best move. Uh, and that is an 18 plus whatever. That, you know, oh, it's 2d10. That is 8 plus 4, 12 damage on the first one. Okay. I'm gonna go roll again for my second attack. Uh, now I have to do the math. 10 plus, it was just plus 7. So 17 to hit. Uh, hit. And two and one. That is only seven damage the second time. Okay. Great. Uh, swing, swing, cut, cut. He's looking rough. Um, the human form is certainly failing him. Um, is that your the turn? The human. Yeah. Oh! You oh, thought there'd be? only be a you phase there, two? You thought there'd be one phase? Like scoops. <laughs> they thought there'd be one phase. Roro Raggy, raise two. Roro Raggy, Gregorio. Gregorio, blew up his head. <laughs> Etc. Like Scoops, he's gonna fucking murder us, man. Like Scoops, I held his head with my bare hands. <laughs> um, Is that your turn, Polly? Yes. That is my turn. Great. Uh, after Polly is Justin, who is going to roll a d20 and try to be alive. Success. One success. Great. So Huzzah. there are two more, and he'll be right as rain. Um, up next is success. Fail. Lexi. Hey, does she does she know that they're just unconscious? No? Not sure. Right? No. Jesus. Okay. That's not. She's. She's not going to feel very good. Well, I don't. Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good. Yeah. <laughs> she is Mr. The, Stark. She just no. lost the, her arm. It's the suit. other kind. It's like the, it's the, it's the Jean Grey kind of not feel so good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. Because, uh, I mean, she just. She was like, oh my God, the only thing that saved me was Max. Right. Um. Justin's down. She's like, Fuck you, Chance. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Put somebody get some soap. This girl <laughs> has to put some soap in her mouth. Stat. Oh, my God. Um, All right. Chance just woke up from being dead. It's getting <laughs> berated. So mad. Um. I just wanted the head. So I assume, I assume that any electrical power she is charged up is probably going to uh, leave her body at some point sure. during this turn. So, um, uh, to the extent where I assume, like, she's she's getting very emotionally charged, and so um, I don't know how I don't I don't know. This is something Must we've had to the like purple the purple lightning as it begins to arc down to the earth. It converges on you in this moment um and sort of fills your and your hair starts to stand on end and the ground around you begins to lift uh and you the, are able to shoot it at him if you'd like magnetic sand is like oh yeah, i'm just gonna like this i'm gonna roll on the ground <laughs> you, just gonna no no no, no. Um, um let's have you roll if you want to shoot a blast at gillian let's have you roll Five D ten. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, oh. again, it, this was really sudden. Power. I don't think she has like a ton of a uh, full grip moment. Yeah. Gotta kind of. Oh, no, five five D ten. Five five D ten. Cool. Wait, and do I? I guess the crit doesn't matter, right? Uh, as in, uh, no, no, no. There's no D twenty. This will hit. So you just roll the five d10 right. damage. Uh, that's twenty-four total. 
That's almost exactly average. Well, cause I got, yeah, I got eight, eight, one, one, and six. Um, yeah, it's 24. Look at this master of math getting excited Plus. over averages. <laughs> I love it. Do I add, do I add like strength or dex or anything or no? Nope. Proper five D 10. Okay. The lightning and he, when he starts getting pushed back by it and he pushes his sword in front of it and it splits and still strikes him on both sides. Um, right on. That is almost certainly your turn. Yeah, and then she's got it like, she's pretty wiped. She's got to take a minute. Sure. Uh, after Lexi is Chance, who is newly alive. Macduff was I, from his mother's womb. Untimely I guess ripped. Bedraggled and full of M&Ms, he tries again. Bedraggled? Yeah, that's a word. All right. Just don't look it up. Okay. Um, Danny looks Stop it, up. it Danny. Danny, Danny, no. Danny's no. <laughs> no. I see you enter gamer mode, getting into that keyboard. Get out of here. I'm, I'm not going to call I, you yeah, I'm just yeah, curious. Yeah. Yeah. I like learning Bedraggled. new words. Uh, it's a word. All right. Is so it really? Gotta... Yes. Whether it's the appropriate word or not is different. Holy <laughs> shit, it's a word, dude. What the fuck? My lexicon is immense. It is. Right. I mean, you do have a good vernacular. That's no doubt. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. I got seven chances. Oh, hell yeah. That's I thought four. six chances. A one. I got a one again. Okay. No, it's seven. Oh. Is okay. it? I did I say know. six last time? No, you said you seven did. last time. Oh, never mind. Yes. I'm stupid. Seven, seven chances to get seven. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's not six. That's not six. Yeah! Yeah! Yes! Here come the M&Ms, baby. Yes! <laughs> Here comes the M&M with, with the last bit of strength <laughs> given to me from my rat friend, I reach into my pocket and just kind of... Yeah. Do one of those little magical actions. I don't know he, how this shit works. He begins to, he begins to, not Augustus Gloop, Violet Beauregard. Is she the yeah. one that turns into a big purple? Yes. Um, he just. Are those M&Ms shooting out of him? Yeah, just huh? bursting at the seams. <laughs> Like vomiting them. Like once like... the seal is broken, they just yeah, they're coming out of his ears and his yeah. eyes like it's coming out of his eyes. <laughs> I just squint at him, I'm like laying on my elbow and say, Have a snack, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> um I'll j he has fourteen health, so I'll say this just kills him. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> um no need to come up with a die roll for this. Uh as he is slain, he lets out a dark dimensional attack as his body is severed from the corporeal form of Gillian. And the uh, the, the the malevolent force of the now uh, uh, powered up like orb and Collegrio burst out of the body and the body literally sh is shred um, into a million pieces and M&Ms are everywhere. You say. <laughs> uh, to shreds, you say. Oh, and yeah. uh, everybody within a 20 foot radius of his body, please make a constitution saving throw. So that's Polly, Rusty, and Mamba. Oh, Rusty's on by Rusty's me. Rusty's near us. Oh, okay. No. Polly yes. and Mamba, please make a DC 18 constitution saving throw. I got 19. Nice. I got a 20. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay, you'll both have the amount of damage that I'm about to roll. Uh oh, I will not. <laughs> oh right, you will get rid of all of it. Yes. Right. Constitution saves in particular are zero on success for me. Oh. Let's go. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. <laughs> and doesn't uh, Mamba have it anyway? Because uncanny dodge. I think that's. Or, yeah, it's all right, half, neither baby. of you. Not, uh, all right, so you take five damage, Mamba. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was his yeah. dark dimensional attack. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, it was great. A little scratch on Mamba, and that's it. <laughs> like, ow, what? Uh, uh, so Collegrio bursts up into the sky, and the, the portal now <laughs> begins to open wider. 
and like the hand comes down again and now the the two forms merge and for the first time you see a bit of its form start to peek through the portal uh, and it yells and screams into your heads like how dare you destroy any form of mine and uh it, it, it is just amassing uh, uh, power and the water begins to slowly seep back in and rise um, and Justin wakes uh, and he is fucked up but he has the wherewithal to like create a, a like a, a shelf of denser water that you can like sit on as the water rises so bring um, a Max's parts or does Lexi need to grab a you gotta grab yeah. that shit okay. I mean he'll just grab his uh, whatever whatever out of his head his like cpu yeah she you can like un unlatch his head because you got his whole anyway. head you can take Di different yeah you different head same deal um you you've got his noggin like you're okay Justin. <laughs> <laughs> yes no no not just a max he's he's out he probably is not powered on who is rolling right now that was me i dropped my die okay <laughs> i was like what are, what are you rolling <laughs> um She's she's saying it to Justin. She's like, you're okay. Yeah, he's like, uh, no. <laughs> um, I mean, alive. Yes. <laughs> uh, and he pushes you guys to shore, and you're able to get up onto the shore as like literally the apocalypse starts to happen. Tornadoes form in the distance, uh, and and begin to cyclone water. Uh, th lightning strikes every which way. Buildings are being struck. Fires are starting in the city. Um, as this this form starts to seep through the portal, and it's fitting that mass destruction is playing right now. Um, and as it peeks, you see its face, and it has these. It, it almost looks like Haunter. It's kind of like Haunter, but hundreds of feet wide, um, and as evil as you can possibly imagine in its deep red eyes and massive formless mouth that opens merely to breathe out purple energy and fumes and then its eyes are here and then they're here and now they're on its back and its arms sort of form and fuse in and out um and uh it looks down at you as it tr it's like struggling to form itself it's like still trying to create form uh, there you go um and uh as this is happening you're like this is terrifying <laughs> like yeah you can handle the guy but this is uh m ms aren't gonna cut it uh, this is, uh, this is a I little bit... I don't have any more. <laughs> <laughs> We're only uh, a little bit terrified. We all have advantage on fear saves when you're nearby me. Oh, oh nice. good. We're just, like, a little bit afraid. Um, so, uh, in this moment, where you're not sure what to do next, and you're really Earth's last defense, <clears throat> uh, a light shines down from within the portal and um a, a a falcon emerges from the beam of light it's a like a, a, a proper bird uh emerges from the light and flies down towards you and as it reaches you it <sighs> transforms into a woman and uh the the woman has long braided auburn hair she's uh, very very attractive she's Super so attractive. hot it's incredibly um, attractive and she has like pointy ears and she wears a flowing dress with a leather belt around her waist and a quiver and bow strapped to her back and as she speaks her her words begin to like warm your very heart even in their hurried tone like she's nervous but they are they feel warm uh, and she says we, uh, we, we do not have much time before Calegrio eats your world and everyone in it. I, 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 I can grant you power, but to do it, you must see the truth. You must hear the truth of the brink as my father spoke it many years ago. Are, are, are you ready to know everything? What okay. other choice do we have? Sure. Oh, bless. And uh, she, um, just as she's about to do something, uh, Calegrio sees her and shoots a dark beam out of his hand and literally this like fine pzz, and it is large enough like up there it looks small but as it gets closer to you it's like this this collated beam will 
destroy everyone within a 30 foot radius and she turns and puts her hand up and like a light force field and the shadow bounces off of it and then she turns to you she's like i'm really sorry about this and she pulls it like uh five arrows from her bow and she looks at justin and he's like I, I, i'm good <laughs> she's like, I, I, i'm literally about to die and she's like no you're a part of this and she grabs an extra one so she has six and she pulls the drawstring and looses the arrows and they turn into like beams of blue light and they strike you in your chest uh, and uh as they strike you you are suddenly back in the sanctum underneath zethus which is where you uh you saw jader and gillian fighting and where the orbs were only this is clearly a memory you're being shown something intentionally come now i can feel that we're close a man's voice can be heard in the room where you fought the dragon and a woman's voice answers Eurelian, we haven't any idea what this place even is the man responds come on chimoth what would they have had those beasts guarding this place if it weren't important who is they another voice asks how am i to know that the first man responds whoever was here before us the door bursts open and a small group of 20 somethings enters they're a ragtag group some of them appear to be researchers others may be warriors they immediately stop talking to each other as they see the room and they obviously don't see you you can sense that this is again a memory uh, and they freeze in place as they see something at the end of the room. Only the leader of the group walks forward cautiously. Eurelian, no! One of the others calls out. It's a shorter man. This Eurelian figure continues to cautiously walk, torch in hand, towards the center of the room. For the first time, you look to your right, towards the altar where the orb was when you saw Gillian fighting Jader. Sitting there against the altar is a man. Or maybe something similar to a man? He certainly has humanoid attributes, but his presence is somehow greater. His eyes glow green, but it appears as though he can scarce move an inch. He's emaciated. His hair is long, but he bears no facial hair. Do you believe in gods, human? Eurelian responds. There are those in this vast ocean who believe in such things, but I've always tended towards science. Good. The individual at the altar responds, There are no more gods. We all died. We? The brink tells many lies, boy. But its greatest lie is that it is inherently good or evil. Eurelian takes another step forward and points the torch. He says, The brink? You better start making some fucking sense, old man. And the man laughs. <laughs> man! No, I am no man. It has been long since I've had any conversation, but... No, the Brink is not good, nor is it evil. It is nothing but life itself. When the universe began, the Brink began with it and birthed into existence eight beings tasked with creating worlds and the life within the worlds. We created many planets in those days but decided to try out creating life in just one to start. It was a mess. We became drunk with power and many calamities arose, yes, but we chose favorites amongst the people. We quarreled with one another. We created great beasts to wage our wars for us. The Brink gave us the power necessary to do such things. I created a great monster to end this world we had made so that we could start anew, but our own god children and the people of that world thwarted those plans. I and the other gods left the world, deciding to leave it be and work on our other worlds we had been tasked with working on. The Brink had other plans. It had already long betrayed us. It had been changing shape to deal with us. Collegrio, it began to call itself. This new devil, this Brink Seed's new manifestation devoured the other gods. I escaped within an inch of my life to this planet and hold myself up here in a sanctum built to the brink. I sent my beasts out to protect this place, to protect me. Apparently the brink had given up on us long ago and had already started sending brink seedlings of its own to organically create and foster life on all the other worlds. It creates life as the brink and fosters it. 
Then when the fruit is ripe and ripe it becomes, it pulls it from the branch and devours it as Calegrio. This is one such site where seedlings begin on a planet. It creates a shrine like this one. This sanctum, like I said, is one such place. I have subsisted off of these orbs until now, but they are dwindling in power, and I fear here at the end of my life, I have waited for someone to come, someone worthy of my power. And you're all like, this is so much information <laughs> that is happening right now. Um, and uh, there is a moment of silence, and then Eurelian interjects, and he said, we are such people. And there are members of his group that are like, sort of afraid, but Eurelian is steadfast. And he, uh, the man at the altar now sort of tries to press himself up out of his seated position. And he says, I shall pass on to you now the power I was given and the power I cultivated over many millennia. What you do with it is up to you, yes, but you must make an oath to me now, Zalar, the last remaining god and god of land and power, that you will foster enough energy here to be able to destroy Calegrio. You must destroy the brink no matter what it takes, no matter how long it takes. You must awaken these orbs. They have power enough to summon him. Perhaps when you are ready, you will bring him here after becoming strong enough to face him. And Zalar's right hand raises into the air and begins to glow with a green flame. He then plunges his hand into his chest, and blue flames now burst forth from the green out of him and flow into the strangers before him. As the flames touch their chests, they envelop them completely. They're in agony. They're, they're shaking, quivering, and screaming. <gasps> they fall to the ground, clutching their chest, overwhelmed by the godlike power that's filling their bodies. But this Eurelian figure, though howling and in pain, does not fall to his knees like the rest of them. He remains standing and suddenly splits in twain. Now two of him standing side by side. They brim with life, with power. Again, you stand in silence as they sort of are, are subsumed. Uh, pretty insane thing you've just witnessed. And many questions, I'm sure, <clears throat> arise. Uh, and maybe now those of you sort of as like table talk, you know, the, the, the gods of Lyceptia, gods, right, Eurelian and crew, were sending offerings to the orbs, not just to become more powerful themselves, but clearly to eventually summon Calegrio to kill him. So who was in the right? Who was in the right? And clearly the monster that the Campaign 2 crew fought at the end was some kind of bastardized version of Calegrio, a not fully formed summoned version uh, that they were able to destroy, and then Miles tampering with the other orb accidentally unleashed one of the orb's energy and full out into the world, creating evil beasts across the land. <clears throat> Suddenly, your minds travel back to your bodies and you stand in New York City again. So you see, the woman says to you, destroying Calegrio means destroying the brink itself and denies new life of creation on budding worlds. But it has to be done. The life that exists now will continue to exist, but the power of the brink will not. You will lose your abilities, yes, but th this must be done or your world will be the first in a long line of worlds. In fact, you're not even the first. I come here trying to save other worlds and being unsuccessful. You are the last hope. There are countless many other worlds and lives that are on the line if we should fail. My world cannot fall. I am deeply sorry, but this fight is up to you now. I'm going to give you the last remainder of my power, Heroes of Earth. And she raises her bow at you once more, and as she pulls the drawstring tight with no arrows knocked, arrows of light appear. And you sort of look at her, and she asks if you have any final requests or if you'd like to back out now. What will happen to us after? I do not know. Oh, I'd rather get rid of it, so... <laughs> Shoot away, lady. Uh, so she looses the drawstring. These arrows of light curve and twist and bend 
uh, and strike you. And uh, light begins to envelop your bodies as a bright, flowing, fiery feeling fills your blood. You feel brimming with a power you can scarcely describe. It is in every inch of you, and yet you, you can control it. You feel you do not even need to announce Brink names anymore. As uh, You are Brink energy almost now. It's so much power. And as, she, as soon as she was there, she's gone. You feel her power, her life, her memories, her everything has been dispersed through you all evenly. This was her life's final act. You feel her hopes and dreams, her loves and ambitions flood your consciousness. The name Shayla rings in your mind. She goes now to return to her brother, you think. You don't know what it means, but that's how you feel. Everyone, information time! Everybody's armor class raises by three. Your movement speed doubles. Your health is full. And your maximum health increases by 40. Ooh, oh my okay. god. Tell me when you've got that down. Yo. <clears throat> Come yeah. as gods. Come as gods. Mamba. You can now create shadows every... Oh, wait, there's an ad playing. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> an ad just started. Gamers, we'll go to a quick break. This is a good opportunity anyway. I'm famished. Mm. We'll find out what happens in just a second. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Speedrunners and Dragons. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Speedrunners and Dragons Campaign 3 finale. Um, there's Tortilla stuck in my teeth. Uh, tortilla. Everybody's doing well. Reminder... Check out the merch, exclamation merch. If you're on YouTube, it's in the description. Um, it's wonderful merch. It's well-made stuff. You can ask anybody that's already gotten one. <clears throat> Shirts are back up for pre-order now after having sold out. And uh, die rollers and die mats still available. Uh, when we last left off just a moment ago, huge reveal, biggest twist maybe of the whole deal. The gods of Campaign 1 were the original Brink users, it seems, and gave the Brink to the Campaign 2 gods. And uh, here we are in Campaign 3, feeling the ramifications of those actions thundering forth many years later. <sighs> Crazy stuff, guys. Crazy stuff. Okay, get ready to write stuff down, team. Ugh. Get your notes in the chat. Mamba! Yes, well, first of all, everybody's armor class goes up by three, your movement speed doubles, your health refills and maximum increases by 40. But Mamba, you can now create shadows. Also, your brink is always on now. It's like always it's like... on. Everyone. You can now, Mamba, you can now create shadows everywhere you step, allowing you to step on the air as if it were the ground. You can envelop your limbs in a shadowy brink energy that eats matter into your shadow dimension as you punch or kick. This unarmed strike is plus strength, plus proficiency to hit, and deals 5d10 brink damage plus strength. Thank you. Can be used in a multi-attack. Is that it? Lexi. Thank you. Hi. You do not need to charge. You are one with electricity. Maneuvering is easy as magnetism now feels as though second nature. You are able to ostensibly fly. Uh, you can shoot electricity made of pure brink energy out of your hands in a 90 foot line that is five feet wide. Any 90 creature feet long 90 and feet five long, feet wide. five feet wide. Any creature in the line of fire must make a DC 18 dexterity saving throw to have the damage or take the full brunt of 9d10 brink damage. 9d10? <laughs> uh huh. Ah, damn. <laughs> Polly lasagna. You can <laughs> feel your, you can feel you can control gravity. Pardon me. You feel that you can control your own gravity in conjunction with the Earth so well that you have achieved the ability to fly. Uh, both oh, you fly. and Lexi have flight speed of a hundred feet per turn. Okay. Um, you can throw antimatter blobs made of anti gravitons at creatures, which causes their matter to be discombobulated. Range is 30 feet, uh, 30, 60, so 60 with disadvantage. 
Um, that is plus dex, plus proficiency to hit. Uh, it deals 5d10 brink damage to the target. Um, a version of the scythe has appeared within your mind. It is the normal length, but now deals 6d10 contact brink damage. So it acts the same as the normal scythe, uh, but it is constantly with you and can be summoned and unsummoned at will, and it deals 6d10 damage on contact. Rusty, you can now transform into almost any creature you can think of at will. Hello, Beast Boy. Okay. This is a bonus action of which you get one per turn. Right. This includes creatures you've seen in movies within reason. This includes humans <laughs> and their brinks. And the dragon. What? Um, we'll figure this out as we go. That kind of goes for everybody's thing. Chance. You have a moment of query. What is Pocket Rockets, you think, if not just transferring objects from there to here? You can also do from here to there already. Why must objects from your pocket be the same size when they go from here to there? Mm. Crazy. Any object in your pocket may now be placed at any point you can see clearly, instantly, and are imbued with brink energy. They may be shrunk to 20 times smaller, or 20 times bigger than their original size, and that is up to, so you can vary that. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll figure out damage rolls and the ramifications of this as we go. Um, <laughs> everybody re-roll initiative for your fight <laughs> with the first being, Calegria. Not 20. Let's go. What does Justin get? Yeah, he was supposed to maybe be dead right now. Um, so, uh... Can we'll he get just do all of them, no matter what the weather is? I'll figure it out. He controls <laughs> the weather. Storm! Let's get the boss playlist going. Uh, rest chance. All right, Mamba. Let's see, 12. Rusty. 13. Chance. Nine. Polly. 13. Lexi, you're up first. Uh, you are currently on the banks of the Manhattan, uh, of, uh, of the Hudson River, pardon me. Um, and uh, it is flying. It is in the air about... Uh, 200 feet away. Okie dokie. Um, I can almost make it up there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she's going to, um, mm, we'll still roll to hit and everything. Uh, nope. Not for no. you. Don't roll the hit. No, it's just anything within the 90 foot, 5 foot range sure. is hit. Okay. Um, then she's gonna uh, start playing around with her flight. Okay. <laughs> kind of pick herself up and um, like, anybody want to <laughs> anybody come in? <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, you're able to lift and you're all like glowing. This is like a big Super Saiyan moment. Yeah. Um, you're all like glowing, basically. Uh, and she lifts off the ground. You're all like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, you're you're able to fly 100 feet if you so desire. Yeah, I'll get I'll get 100 feet kind of. I mean, yeah, but I can't quite hit it because I'll be about 10 feet away. Yeah. Um, you're cool to chill there if you want. Can, oh, it's I don't need to pull anything from nope. anywhere. Nope. Can I? Can I uh, try to take advantage of the lightning coming from the portal, almost like a defense mechanism? What do you mean? <laughs> like, if I have electricity, I could use it to like. Can you use it to block? Can you can sure, you use electricity to block an attack? Why not? Uh, yeah, you create an electric force field in front of you. 
Uh, that increases your armor class by five for one turn. I'm loving this. Yeah, it. fuck it mode. This in is In the great. Baronade fight in Ocarina of Time, <laughs> when you throw the boomerang, it can clank off of the lightning bolts that it shoots at you and just not work. I, did, I, I've, I've, I don't think I've ever seen that interaction. It's very stupid. It, I, yeah, I hope it never happens to me. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to chill like that, that the, for a little word. bit. Uh, after Lexi is uh, Polly or Rusty, who wants to go first? Go for it, Polly. All right. Uh, are my antimatter blobs an action or a bonus action to throw? That is your action to attack with them. Okay. Um, he is 200 feet away. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, I believe I will just begin to float off the ground as well. Gravity schmavity kicking in full force. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, and I'm, I'm going to zoom through the air and join Lexi. Okay. I'll, 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 uh, can I can I sit inside her force field? You can sit behind her. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm using a 13 year old girl as a shield. Let's go. <laughs> uh, I after Paul is rusty. <laughs> okay. Um, I, my mind is overwhelmed with the knowledge of creatures. Um, <laughs> and real, <laughs> real and unreal. Um, and you know what? Let's be nerdy about it. So, video games. Uh, I'm gonna use modern Prometheus to transform into Rayquaza. Why not? Let's we, go. We can do this. Um, which is a flying no creature. To believe uh, Rusty hasn't seen a Pokemon game be played. Right. Mamba exactly. freaks the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. Gardevoir black hole it. Yeah. You sure you don't want to be Rattata? No. Yeah. <laughs> to level one. I just want to be a virtual Rayquaza. rat. Uh, let's say as Rayquaza, your movement speed is 300 feet per turn flying. Okay. Um, and you can use. Hyper beam. Um, Love that. And does he have to uh, wait a turn? Yes. I like that. Okay. Um, and hyper beam does a fifty foot, five foot wide beam that deals ten d ten damage. Cool. This is okay. like the last episode of a show that you've loved for a really long time, and they just throw everything against the wall, and they don't care what sticks. <laughs> yeah, and for it. some reason, they have the intellectual property of every other series that in existence. <laughs> what are you going to do? Take us off the air? <laughs> and so Master Chief descends through the portal. <laughs> I need a weapon. I mean, as a, as a dragon... <laughs> As a dragon type, that also means that I have weaknesses and stuff, but we, you know, this is getting too yeah, much into uh, the... I transform into Master Chief, and I shoot with my BR, um, <laughs> and I'd like an overshield. Uh... Hey, yeah. BXR, the, the Eldritch of God. of D&D right here. <laughs> um, and considering my other compatriots can't fly, I guess I offer myself to ferry them. Hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, baby. I'm on. I'm riding the dragon. <laughs> uh, Mamba can run on the air. Okay. In air walk. Yeah. I'm the, I'm, air walk. I'm the only one without mobility, unless I can no, matter but, myself so, anywhere. Ch chance, I, the reason I did that is because you liked this whole campaign, you liked playing ranged. Yeah. So your ability allows you to send things wherever you want. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I was thinking you'd play ranged, but you don't have to. I Can I not matter myself somewhere? I don't think so, because <laughs> oh. the idea is things from your pocket. Oh, I, you said anything. If it's in the pocket, it, it'll go. Oh, okay. All right. That, li that limits me slightly with where my ideas were going, but... We can talk about it. We can have no, no, discussions. No. no, no, no. I got this. Is it my turn now? Uh, no, it is still oh, Rusty's okay. turn. If if do you want to get on board, Rusty? I am, yeah. Okay, uh, Rusty, you are, you can fly up there and shoot hyper beam if you'd like. Okay, um, that's what I make it. Yeah, yeah he how can far fly away? Three hundred, because Rayquaza's base speed stat is like one hundred and seventy. Oh, something. that's fair. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's take the let's take the first shot then. Let's try. Yeah. There's no roll to hit. Just roll ten d ten for me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um. <laughs> base speed. Oh, it's only ninety five. That's a lot lower than I thought. Still very high. It's because his attack and special attack are both one fifty. <laughs> You're not gonna believe this. Did Secret? you roll sixty-nine? No! Yeah! No! Take a fucking screenshot. Nice. Take a fucking screenshot. <laughs> nice. Yep, no that's pretty way. nice. Nice. Uh can I post it in the I'll just post it in the Discord. <laughs> post it in general. 
with yeah. no context. So the people who aren't in the Speedrunners and Dragons Discord are missing out. There it is. Incredible. Some EWEs in the chat room, please. Incredible. <laughs> there you go. I was like, the only number I could think of that'd be unbelievable is 100. <laughs> I was wrong. Um, <laughs> all right. You now feel that you'll have to recharge for a turn. Okay. Uh, after Rusty is Mamba. Mamba's got that shadow walking. Hey, yay. Let's see where I have double. So you can dash like 120 feet, basically. Yeah, like I, I could, I, I can definitely reach him as like from my class, I think, right? Yeah. I might, I might, I might as well just dash up there. He's gonna, he's gonna air walk up to this phantasm of a, of a character. Mm hmm. And he's gonna. I was just looking at the, uh, the attack properties. Yeah, he's well, gonna punch your, him with his what's fist. What's your base movement speed? Uh, double. That was at. That was at ninety, right? So you can go one hundred and eighty feet. In your turn, and it's two hundred feet away. Ah, uh, damn. So you can but join. Me. You can join Polly and Lexi in the electricity field. Yeah, sure. Go, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Sure. Hey. Um, after Mamba is Chance, who is right up there. Are we like under the rift? Yeah. We are? Okay. What I would like to do is I would like to use my new godly pocket powers. Oh, God Pocket. <laughs> I'm going to use God Pocket to take <laughs> this stupid a mass of pens that you have given me throughout our journey because every yes. time i'm like what is there to steal a basket of pens there's a basket of pens. pens there are lots of there's pens a basket of world. pens i think i have three baskets of pens i would like, like to 50 put pens i would like to put all of them 20 times their size inside the rift so that they begin falling like skewers <laughs> and imbue, imbue with the brink energy from the rift as they fall onto Caligrio. My, my favorite part of this is the ramification that if this battle is to be successful, if these objects don't shrink, the Hudson River will now have <laughs> massive <laughs> pens. Just like, just like 60 giant pens that are just in the ground and like three baskets the size of the city. <laughs> just like strewn about <laughs> it's not that big 20 times a pen a 20 times normal pen is not the size of manhattan yeah it is uh, i did the uh, math it works i did the math okay um i believe you okay i believe you um let's do jump in the line i just watched beetlejuice last night nice um uh, hey oh Should probably pull up one of these dice rollers, huh? Yeah. The hail Might be good of for pens, this one. The hail of pens will say is is eight d10 damage. I would do like one dice per pen, right? Okay, a, a d8 per pen. <laughs> but that's too many pens. This is like fifty. It's a pens. lot of d8s. <laughs> All right, let's say a d4 per pen. Okay, how many pens? So we'll do fifty d4. <laughs> Oh, you know, <laughs> all right. Sides on the dice, right now. four, number of dice, 50. Can you imagine Start. somebody just be like, okay, give me a minute, give me a minute. <laughs> uh, boom, um, boom, boom. Ken? What'd you get? Ken? Chance. This is, this is not doing. Here, I can do it. I can do it. Oh, so I'm 132. Do once. 132 damage from the pens, baby. <laughs> they're, just high. they're just They're just collecting brink energy. Fuck <laughs> They pierce it as it like undulates from the shock. Um, how much is it? 132? Ultimate power. Huh? 100, 132? That's correct. Okay. Nice. Uh, yeah, excellent. Is that your turn? Uh, and then I would, I would like to taunt the creature. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Uh, I will make a wisdom saving throw. I fail. There you go. Uh, so I have disadvantage on my next attack, yes? That's correct. Okay. 
Um, after eat shit. Eat shit. That's my taunt. <laughs> after chance, no no pun with pens or anything. No. Okay. Uh, it's Calegrio's turn. <laughs> Uh, and boy, oh boy, does he get to attack a few times. Um, <laughs> so the first thing he's going to do is use his Calegrian swipe to strike at Rayquaza. I don't know. Does a 20 hit Rayquaza? <laughs> yep. Oh. I would say so. I, I wanted to... Could I, before that, get off? And could go I... where? I would like to take my fully punched pizza card times 20 size and use it as a parachute <laughs> to <laughs> gently float down to safety. <laughs> the punches, of course, providing ample airflow to descend at a, a good rate. Oh my God. Yes, you may float gently to the water's edge. Thank you. Um, you fall into the river. You're waiting now. That's fine. I have okay. the I have the pizza card to float on. It's buoyant. Yeah, great. Um, yeah. But Chance's ability does raise some questions about the second law of thermodynamics, but that's really okay. <laughs> Actually, the first law of thermodynamics. Eh, um, we're gods now. Yeah, we're gods now. We made um, those laws. Yeah, well, exactly. Uh, exactly. Uh, all right, Rayquaza. So let's go with this, Rusty. Let's say. Let's say that your health is normal. Okay. Like you, your health bar is the same no matter what. Okay. You take. Nineteen brink damage. Okay. Uh, as he okay. strikes you and you flail to the side. Uh, then uh, it is going to use a Calegrian Blast at the Lexi Force Field. Uh, oh, wait, I have to roll with disadvantage. Hang on. Hang on. That first one has to be with disadvantage. It still hits. Sorry, Chance. It's okay. Um, okay. Uh, so Calegrian Blast. Um... Yeah, this is weird because it's a it's a saving throw to Okay, uh here's what we'll do. Um Lexi, Polly, and Mamba, please make a dexterity saving throw with advantage for me. Which kind? Dexterity. dexterity. Oh, wow. I my brain just ignored that word. Oh, I thought <laughs> you were asking as confirmation that you could just not take any damage. No, no. Um Oh, wow, a 20 first roll. Uh, all right, that's a success from Polly, Lexi. Nine. Uh, Mamba. The advantage was 19. Okay. Uh, Mamba and Polly take half. Lexi does not take half. That's 64. <laughs> um, like Nintendo. Aha. Ha. Um, so, uh, Polly, if I'm not mistaken, you take zero? What? De it's a dex saving throw? No, it's constitution for me. Oh, cool. All right, you take 32. <laughs> uh, and Mamba also takes 32. Um, question, when we got healed up, did that count as a rest or no? You were full of everything. I, yeah, but I get, I get um, like temporary hit points on top of my, ma my main hit points on resting. Do I get those? Yeah, or? sure. Okay. Um, that, that hurt a lot. <laughs> You're telling me. Um, don't worry, your boyfriend is coming. Uh, <laughs> as soon as I figure out what it is that he does. <laughs> oh. Um, all right, Caligula is going to attack again. Um, Storm now from X Men. <laughs> what is this? Uh, a storm attack? <laughs> hey, yo. Mamba, can you please grace us with the word? The multi attack. The multi attack. Um, Calegrian Eye, his next ability. Uh, he's going to lock eyes with the taunter. The, the, the tauntress. The ta taunt, the taunterer supreme. Anyway, uh, he locks eyes with Chance. Uh, Chance, can you make a constitution saving throw for me, please? Yes, sir. Oh, mm. this is actually really bad if you fail. Um, well. I would like to use a reaction to be helpful to Chance. Okay. 
So you get Matt. advantage on this roll. Yes, thank you. Well. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, that would be a uh, nine. Uh, Chance, you are paralyzed. <laughs> um, and I just realized you. Well, no, you're on top of the pizza card. Yeah. Okay, so you're not gonna drown. Um, no, I'm just. I'm floating. All right, fifth edition. I always forget. I'm just heading down the Hudson. It's kind of nice. It's like a lazy river. <laughs> yeah. Except you're it's like, a stinky. But... I guess little, lazy you know, rivers are stinky. Big uh, cardboard soggy thing that I'm on, but it, you know. Um, all right. You automatically fail strength and dexterity saving throws. Attack rolls against you have advantage, and any attack that hits you within five feet is crit. Um, uh, you re-roll this check every turn to okay. try to break free. Um, right. Okay. After chance, or pardon me, after Collegrio is Justin. Justin, super special, souped up, super saiyan, shamalama, ding dong, wobble wobble. You like do a joint attack or some shit? Um, he has gained the ability of clarity. <laughs> um, <laughs> he doesn't want to participate. Uh, That's the clarity. Fuck um, this. <laughs> no, he is, he is able to use any one of his weather abilities at will. I did like that suggestion, whoever said that. Um, we all did. Okay. Um, <laughs> and, we were all uh, like, he can do it. He can do everything. He's we so are just. He can do everything. He can do yeah. everything. Hang on, I gotta find his character. Okay, Justin Ikari. Uh, he first uses water to quickly go up to Lexi. Um, and uh, now he will take fire in his hands and put his hands on your shoulders. Uh, you will heal for... Oh. Nope. <laughs> 20. Thank you. <laughs> um, you heal for 20. Uh, and then uh, Justin will turn. Actually, that was his action, so he can't take a multi-attack this turn. Okay, that's his turn. He's floating right there, right next to you. Um, after Justin, it is Lexi's turn yet again. Hey, um, I say thank you. Like I heard a you're, lot. You're welcome. Um, then uh, she's gonna flash back. She's got to get a little closer to Legriel. Just ten feet. So, huh? Just ten feet, actually, which is yeah. funny. But I mean, yeah, she's gonna be like CRB. Yeah, I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, hang on. And um. She's gonna be real mad, so if she can like grab whatever she can from the I know she already has it, but it'd be great to also sure. just have the power going through from the rift. Come do it. Like, uh yeah, roll nine D ten. Alright, I have four of them. I can we can also just type it if you don't wanna but it is satisfying to roll a lot of dice. Yeah. Nine of them. Nine of them, yeah. Haunter do be Last having four. mean look though. You do. Thirty-three. Nice. Um. Anything else? Uh. I'm gonna. His current health was a multiple of thirty-three, so that was very easy. Nice. And um. And I'm gonna exploit weakness again. Okay. I'm just assessing its weakness. Uh, the power of friendship. It'll give me, okay. I don't know if it'll give, <laughs> I don't know if it'll give me actually anything bonus because I don't we do all any attack or an, an extra put our hands D, together. An extra D10 on your face. next attack. Yeah. Sick. Um, after Lexi is, uh, Polly. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fly up close and I'm going to try to slash him with my new and improved Hell's Agent Scythe. Uh, does a 20 hit this thing? Does it? Let's find out. Boy. Oh, I'm on the wrong document. Uh, yes! Good. Uh, and the damage roll is 32 damage. 
Nice. Oh, did it not did it do the DC roll for having the damage or are you not? What's that? Oh, was there a DC on yours, Foo? Yes. Nah, fuck it. It's, I don't roll to hit. Okay. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. 32. Uh, all right. Now I'm going to do the multi-attack. Sure. Thank you, Kate. That one does not hit. Um, but I'm going to stay uh, close to Calegrio, um, and I'm going to use Second Wind to regain 1d10 plus my level health. I think I probably have not done all campaign, uh, <laughs> but I gain 13 health back. Sweet. After Polly is Rusty, Mr. Rayquaza himself. Yeah, apparently. Um, so you, so can't, you can't attack. I can't attack again, but actions are fine. Sure. Okay. Um, in that case, I'm going to fly back to um, Chance, who is floating down on a pizza card. Um, and I'm going to use Dulled Nerves, which if I expend five medicinal dice, then you get temporary hit points. So I'm just going to go ahead and roll that right now. Got to get rid of all these D10. Just one second. Fucking everyone on the Jersey Shore right now is just like filming this. Like, Man on a giant oh, pizza a card being Pokemon. bequeathed to magical healing from a Is dragon. That a fucking Rayquaza? Yeah. Oh, bro, whoa, whoa, Pokemon goes real this season? Yeah. yeah everyone's, everyone's loading up their raids. Yeah, they're just yeah, like, they're like, I gotta catch it. Get out of Gold Man. Man, Game Freak's going hard this year, dude. Yeah. Like a Niantic dog. Some next level shit. So, you gain chance six temporary hit points. Not that much, but. Um, if I give you any hit points, then I can also use three extra medicinal dice to cure you of a temporary condition, so you're not paralyzed anymore. Cool. How many cool. of those bad boys do you got? Holy moly. <laughs> I have over 20 of the hit dice. So, of the <laughs> medicinal <laughs> dice. Uh, bonus action. Surprising. Um, I'm going to do a transform again, right back to my regular form. And join okay. Chance on the pizza card. Yes. Okay. And then I'm going to look at him, and I'm going to say, I've been wanting to do this forever but i think now is the time put me oh. in your pocket put me in your pocket may, may i may i do this out of turn uh it's your turn next well it's oh. mamba's next but we'll get to you in I'll, just after that i'll, I'll forego the turn and no you get a turn my friend <laughs> well uh, I, meant, I meant like like hold the turn like i can oh, do yeah, that, we right? can swap you that's fine yeah. yeah okay um chance yeah it's your turn i can i can it be like a bonus action or whatever to yeah sure dude i will take rusty in my hand and say good luck and then <laughs> not knowing what awaits on the other side i am put ready. him in the pocket uh yeah. rusty you see chances childhood memories <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um a lot of game boy uh you are suddenly in a white expanse of nothing um Ooh. and uh that's it there's nothing and you then, can breathe, you can walk around, there is nothing in every direction. It's just purgatory. What I, would, what I would like to do then is I would like to look over near Calegrio, maybe 30 feet away or so, and then make Rusty appear 20 times his size. Kaiju Here we go. rat! <laughs> Kaiju rat! That's right. This was uh, the plan. What, this was the plan all along. What, like six inches tall, maybe? Yeah. Um, well, it's maybe, a maybe a foot. Maybe it's a, a, New York a, a foot long, so he's t 20 feet long now, and like fit, fit 12 feet tall. Um, it's pretty so terrifying. You're just putting so. him right outside of Calegrio? What? what, what uh, you, are on you asking if I'm putting Rusty inside of Calegrio? I'm saying you could <laughs> if you wanted to. I. I don't know what the inside of Calegrio is. Fair. I, I don't. I don't want to. I don't think that's <laughs> fair. Because yeah, right. doesn't he consume everything? That uh, yes, seems that is like, his thing. That is. Yeah, his it thing. seems like a bad idea. Just, here, uh, have a rat. Yum yum yum. Twenty twenty <laughs> times the the yum yum. Yeah, uh, Rusty, you appear. You were nowhere, and now you are somewhere. Great. Right You're next right. to Calegrio, and you're massive. Wouldn't he Huge. just be in the air? Yeah, um, which is why I'm gonna. Oh, give I thought Calegrio was on the ground. <laughs> no, no like was like 200 feet in the air. <laughs> this whole encounter is taking place in the air. 
I totally missed that part. Do you you flew off. on a dragon to get there. I thought I was a baboon. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. I will allow you to change your answer only because obviously Chance would see that he's flying. Yeah, yeah. So above Collegrio yeah, yeah, so I that he that, would yeah, fall. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you fall on top of Collegrio. Uh, and Collegrio takes, I don't know, I'll roll 4d10 damage. Nineteen. Nice. Oh, so close to average. <laughs> Can't make fun of me. I'm impossible to make fun of. <laughs> but I'm a god. <laughs> <laughs> I made you. I can unmake you. Um, all right, that is. That's chances. what my mom used to say to me. Oh boy. Uh, I believe that'll be Chance's turn. I brought you into this world, and I can take you back out. <laughs> is that your turn, Chance? Uh, I I'll use my fourth that. taunt. Okay. Um, and I'll say, oh, that sucks for you, rats. <laughs> he fails. Oh, fails. rats. Oh, wait, no. Is it 16? It, it, it's 16. He succeeds. He got a 16. Uh, rats would it for me. You to know he's good at every saving throw. Um, Not at all. Uh, okay. Um, oh, is, is the weakness one the one that tells you immunities, Fu? Or is that the other one? Uh, the one. I think one, that's the other one. I think it's yeah. That would be subject analysis. Okay, never mind. Um, no, no, wait, no, no. This says it says assess a creature's weaknesses. Right, but the one that tells you immunities. That's the other one. No, I do not learn this immunity. Okay. I'd have to do a separate action for that. Sweet. Uh, after chance, we'll go back to Mamba. Cool. Uh, I'm just gonna dash up to this fearsome foe with this new form of shadow boxing that I'm gonna call it. I like uh, that. Yeah, me too. Let us do this. These New York rats are crazy this year. <laughs> hey, uh, 22 hit. Uh, yes. Oh, sick. That's a 5d10 plus strength. Versus 28 damage. Nice. And we'll multi-attack again, just kind of like like the whole like oh, da, oh, da, oh, da, oh, da. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah. Muda, 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 muda. That is a twenty. That is a non-nat twenty. Hits. For twenty-six additional damage. <laughs> Very nice, gamers. Very nice. We're doing oh. some damage. Just. Lasers, big rat, crazy shit is happening. <laughs> um, Mamba, you staying right up against that man? I'm staying right up against that man. Okay, that man's in. See what's coming. Uh, after Mamba and after Chance is Collegrio. Time for the triple, baby. Uh, Collegrio is going to attempt to slap Rusty. Slap me. <laughs> is he just hanging out on his back? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Back is a weird word for what this thing is, but yeah, top. it's on top of him. Uh, Rusty, does a 16 hit you? Nope. Okay, he he misjudges and hits himself. <laughs> um, uh, but he can't hurt himself, so... Uh, and then he is going to use Collegrian Blast once again. Uh, and he will be using this on... Actually, he's going to swipe at Mamba at his side. Mamba, does a 26 hit you? <sighs> yeah, it does. No way, really? Man, this die roller is truly nice. 34. Half of that. Okay, 17. Yeah. Um, it's like Gouger. Yeah, truly. Season one. <laughs> um, he I'll have actually that. have that, and then uh, it's actually quarter because of this ability, and I have seven attacks this turn. They're all <laughs> automatically crits, uh, and then I use a bonus action to hide from sight. I can't be attacked. And then I use my short bow, my short bow, and I do 100 damage. Yeah, the fucking short bow doing 100 damage is so dumb. <laughs> Literally, so I think I think Gouger might have not counting this battle the all-time SMD damage record of like 80 or something. It's possible. Yeah. Um, anyway. Uh, Those turns took so goddamn long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, all right, I'm gonna get a snack. Uh, yeah, you can watch season one now with a, a newfound sense of intrigue.
Don't it's spoil true. it for the yeah. people who haven't seen this yet. Um, Polly, uh, he's gonna Calegrian blast your ass. <laughs> oh, hey, yo, <laughs> hey, yo, uh, could I get a dexterity saving throw from you, please, my friend? You sure can. The dexterity ass saving throw. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to use an adrenaline die to, uh, change the result of this. Let's see. 1d8. Trying to like. prevent the otherworldly prolapse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got him good. <laughs> 21? That hits. Or you succeed, I mean. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. Otherworldly prolapse. That's the name of the, the title. That's the episode. No, title. no, 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 no. It's just called Finale. I specifically requested from Richard that this be the normal thumbnail for the season. Um, you take 22. That's half of 44. Not just going to be Rayquaza? What was that? It's not, not no, it's gonna... not Rick. No. <laughs> but the it confused face. everyone. Rayquaza <laughs> versus Pokemon. Haunter. Yeah, right. Oh, shit, yeah. True. Let's Pokemon yeah. Um, uh, okay. Uh, that is Calegrio's turn. Um, he's just posting up. He's not afraid of no ghost. Um, after Calegrio is Justin. Justin sh is going to shoot fire at this guy. Uh, and he's going to roll to hit that. That's a hit on the first one. He's going to do 5d10. Come on, Google. You can do it. Come on, Google. There we go. Justin does 32 on the first strike. A lot of math taking place. Uh, he's going to go again, and this time he is going to... Um, teleport behind Calegrio using his nighttime ability, uh, and then shoot the fire again. Nothing personnel, kid. <laughs> that definitely hits, and that one is 24 damage. Okay, after Justin, we're back to Lexi. <clears throat> He's... She's feeling it. She's feeling it. She's just going to be like, screw you. Yeah, hell yeah. Palpatine, this guy. Yeah, I know. Um, that's all she's. Yeah, she just keeps charging up and just like getting uh, at all of her 13 year old angst. <laughs> what's the DC on the saving throw? Uh, 18. Success. He'll take half this time. Okay. What does Justin do in a thunderstorm? I have rain, but not f lightning as a thing. Now, anything. It, what what does Justin do? Yes. So, <laughs> correct. <Okay>. Indeed. <laughs> uh, 54? I don't have that. Uh, 27. Seven. Okay, excellent. And she, um, um, yeah, what do you want to do? an action or a bonus action to try to like gather another build up? We'll say it's a bonus action, but you can't do it every turn. Like every yeah. other turn is fine. Okay, <clears throat> I'll have that up. Right, and if it gets struck, it breaks. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, after Lexi is. Man, Lexi rolled so much higher than everyone else. Uh, Polly. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna experiment with some antimatter blobs here now that I'm close in. Uh, let's let's see what those do. But Mr. Calegrio. Uh, that is not a hit. I roll again for my multi attack. Multi. That one is a twenty six. Hit. Okay. Uh, this antimatter blob. Does 5d10 damage, which is 37. Very good roll for 5d10. Yeah, very, very good. Okay. 
Yeah, you throw this blob of like indiscernible mass. Like it looks like light is bending around it, but maybe into it. Uh, and it, uh, very white hole station-esque. And as it strikes Collegrio, it like, it like, zoom, like consumes some of his energy, but it's also like flapping weird and moving. It's impossible to describe. Uh, and he takes that damage. <laughs> Is that your turn? <laughs> Uh, that's what I got. Okay. I think uh, the half. I think the zoom was a pretty apt. The zoom. Cool. Yeah. I, 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 I love I Outer Wilds. It, it very much so is a zoom. I just beat it the other day. What do you think? Real quick I, aside. I said I said eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. Maybe eight and a half. Oh wow! All right. I really really liked eight out of ten is a very high rating for me. I yes. really really enjoyed it. There were a few things I took a little bit of umbrage with design wise, but overall it's unlike anything I've ever played. Indeed. That's definitely true. That's that's a that's what I've heard. So. It's it's definitely a very singular experience. And as a space nerd, the first six hours of gameplay were pretty much me just like coming my pants every time I like flew mm -hmm. somewhere new. Um, <laughs> uh, highly that recommend feeling quickly anyone left play trying it. to find the uh, Sunless City. That's all I have to say. It is my uh, favorite game of all time. Definitely play that wow. game in chat right now. Play that game. It's one of those oh, games wow. where. Once you know, you can't unknow. So play it for yourself. Under yeah. Yeah, that's what I heard. Play Oberdin. Play Oberdin. That's another one. Oberdin yep. is quickly becoming top three, maybe top five games all time for me. I've never had a gaming experience like it. It's unbelievable. Um, if you're a puzzle game person, uh, Oberdin will blow your balls. Um, hey, yo. That's hey, right. If you don't have balls. They'll blow them anyway. Okay. <laughs> It'll make you grow balls It'll blow and then it'll your like boobs. blow them. Oh my god. <laughs> blow um, your boobs, you yeah. motorboating son of a game, you. <laughs> uh, all right, who just went? <laughs> Paul. Oh, he laughs when he says it, but not when I say it. It's cool. It's Rusty's turn. Fine. Okay. Um, yes, Chance did exactly what I wanted. Um, you need a 20 foot rat bite. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I was hoping that yeah, this 20 times size difference yes, transfers into transformations. So I use my bonus action to turn back into Rayquaza again. But now the, the Pokedex lists him as 26, 23 or 26. Let's find out. Years 23 old? feet. You are, you are a 500 foot dragon. <laughs> yeah, 23 feet. So 460 foot tall, like dragon serpent now. Okay. I don't know if that has what any sort of ramifications. Is, what is um, your wish? Exactly. <laughs> he begins to fall towards the water under your weight. Okay. Uh, well, where, where am I? <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Didn't you? You're you teleported floating. me up, you're already, right? You're still floating. Yeah, the that river is taking me. That wave is going to be brutal. <laughs> um, he's going to make a strength save to try not to fall all the way. That's a 19. I'll say that's a success. Um, but uh, he falls like halfway down. And Rusty, I'll say that your next attack for one turn can be double the dice. Sure. Okay. You point blank hyper beam this motherfucker. That's kind of what I was planning to do. Um... Can, can can Mamba also just mark the fuck out for a minute? Yeah, because <laughs> sure. this is the most this is like the coolest shit he's ever seen. <laughs> we're gonna give we're gonna give Mamba an inspiration point for <laughs> Rusty's <laughs> cool thing. No 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 no! no. I want to give him one of my inspiration points. Okay. Okay. Is it possible for me to do that? All right, cool. Because sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cause Remind me what that does again. Attack the hit it's it's just two. a reroll, right? Yeah. No. Okay. Um, Mamba is crying from, I mean, like I would. Mamba is crying from how cool <laughs> this is, and one of Mamba's tears floats down and lands on Rayquaza's back, and you feel a moment of pure elation uh, and power, and you are able to re-roll uh, any d20 um, that you roll. Okay. Gen uh, 3. So that, 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 gen. <laughs> that could come in handy soon. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, roll 20 d10. <laughs> 20 oh d10. God. I'm just going to roll the 10 twice because I don't want to have that many dice on the screen. So that's 53 plus 50 is 103. 103. 
you lean down and just <laughs> and the, the laser worst motorboat like, ever. The laser like goes through Collegrio down to the water and strikes the water, and Chance is holding on to the fucking raft for dear life as waves the size of canyons like M&M. feeling like Aladdin getting out yeah. of the cave of wonders. Exactly. Um, and uh, yeah, you are you, you shrink back down to normal size. Okay. Uh, normal size. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you must recover on next turn. From attacking, yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, is that your turn? Yes, sir. Okay. Mamba. Mm hmm. Your turn. We got we got more Ora Ora coming at you. Yeah, he, he fell like 40 feet. I'm going to shadow walk down there. Yeah. <laughs> ora Ora. Ora, 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 ora. <laughs> I'm gonna approach this beast uh, for a. Is that 21? 21 hits, right? Hit. One, two, three, four, five. 22 damage on the first swing. Nice. First, first couple swings, you know. Multi attack! 19 hits? Uh, No, 19 does not hit. Okay. Just, just making sure. Foo, are you hard out at 10? No, I don't okay, have my show so this week. Everybody's cool to go for a little bit longer. Yes, I know we're over the four hour mark, which is what I had promised. But are Can't you really? Believe it. Are you really I am surprised? absolutely. Campaign shook. one finale is genuinely six hours long, and it, this one will not be that long. Um, I remember uh, having a lot of beer that time. I yes. I so episode hog. nine of uh, campaign one of Sweet Dungeons and Dragons was my uh, first stream as a Twitch partner. And I drank the whole time. And it was a big <laughs> battle episode. It's like the war episode. And my that. sister, who is an avid watcher of the show, texted me like two hours in and she said, you're getting messy. <laughs> and I was, like, <laughs> I was like, all right, time to stop drinking. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, so yes, that was Mamba. That was your turn. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. After Mamba is Chance. Hmm. I, am I in a position to be doing things at the moment? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, surfing you're, on a You're on giant the water and he's 40 card. feet above it, but. All right. Well, while searching on a, searching, search, <laughs> surfing on a giant pizza card. Good Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, not having a stroke. Um, I I would like to reach into my pocket and take the blowtorch that I yoinked from the warehouse. Okay. He's 40 feet in the air, huh? Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> mm. Is Rusty still around? Rusty's on top of him as Rayquaza right now. Didn't he okay. be 100? How far is he in the air? So, I... Yeah, I guess you had to go 200 feet. So he's 100 feet in the air. I could I could see it, though. And that's the yeah. stipulation. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, I'd like to, you know, turn on a blowtorch, make it 20 times bigger, and make it appear facing into uh, uh. Caligrio, just resting kind of on top of him. Just a okay. blowtorch. Um, let's have you... Let's have you roll... Uh, that would hurt. Um, how about 8d10? I'm okay with that. I am an idiot and closed the page. One moment. That's okay. I can do it right now if you want. Got it. Okay. Forty-five. Forty-five. <clears throat> and he will continue to take that damage every turn if he does not move it. Man, you could solve the oil crisis. I could solve a lot of crisis. I just thought of that. Like, you could make infinite food. Correct. What did you say it was 45? Yes. Okay. I could turn a bread loaf into a bread bus. <laughs> there is the odd question of, if I does keep it looping it, energy? does that make the atoms 20 times the size? Yeah. Uh... 
the, right, like the the abstract idea of it, right, is you're making more atoms and the mm. object, uh, whatever, twenty tuples, but whatever. Yeah, uh, danger is just transformed into a fictional creature. Like what? I am a master <laughs> of matter. Um, so is that your turn, my friend? Um, can I? Ins who do I inspire? I'm gonna inspire. I'm gonna inspire. Lexi. Hi. I'm gonna say, get him, Raiden. I'm running out inspiring. of creativity juice. I, I'm, I'm, the tank is running low, man. You and me both, pal. You <laughs> and me both. Thank you. So what do I get? It's uh, a... It's a that's an inspiration plus, die. Plus a uh, uh, D6, no. right? It's it plus called? six. Yeah, it's a, it's a D6. Inspiration a D6. D6 Onto thing. anything before you know the result. You sure. can use it yes. once. Correct. Um, okay, I believe you. Uh, after chance is Collegrio. My man's We're gonna going to pretend that she was within 60 feet of me and That's could hear me say that. And you're feeling godlike. You can inspire from uh, a distance. You're inspired. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, the first thing that happens is it's going to flip <laughs> to roll the blowtorch into the river and roll Rusty off the top. Um, so Rusty, you like sort of fall into a flying position, okay. uh, and the blowtorch falls into the water and another massive wave, uh, crashes as <laughs> if it's just flicked on and stuck on butane is just leaking into the Hudson, um, is what it is. Oops. Uh, the oil spill. Honestly, um, leaking butane into the Hudson. It was already 2% butane as it was. <laughs> uh... We'll make an apology video later. Ads. Yeah. Ads. Ads? I don't care. Uh, we're gonna... Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you're missing just an attack. Um, somebody tell them that in chat. Uh, we're not gonna sit here for two... It's in just a minute more. Um, it is gonna shoot Calegrian Blast. You are <laughs> Le Lefty's one of my viewers. It's fun. <laughs> on the, on the, on the pretense that any two points can be made into a line, uh, Collegrio is going to move into such a position so that uh, he may strike Polly and Lexi. Well, the blast is 40 feet wide and 200 feet long. Do you know what? He's going to maneuver upwards and to an angle so he can hit Mamba, Polly, Rusty, and Lexi. Uh... <laughs> oh my god! Because <laughs> uh, in my spatial reasoning mind where I'm currently playing 5D chess against myself um, to figure out where in 3D space everyone is flying, um, <laughs> this works, and you're all just gonna deal with it. Uh, everybody that I just mentioned, please take a, uh, make a dexterity saving throw. In my head cannon, Justin is too far to the left. I don't know how I can explain that to you, but it is true. Uh, Polly. 23. Mamba. Got an eight. Uh, Rusty. 22. Lexi? 14. Oh! You can, you can use your inspiration die. Oh, to add a d6? Yeah. And you heal for that amount. Yeah, I think I need to do that. 16. Plus 2 Let's HP! Let's go! Uh, those of you oh that halved Hi. it, you take 29. Ooh. Those dead. of you that did not have it, which is Lexi and Rusty? No, who got an eight? Mamba. It's Mamba and Lexi. You take 58. No. Uh, she did! Dead. Dead. Uh, not dead, dead. Um, yes, but I'm now probably just yeah, you falling are now plummeting through toward the, the sky. ground. Good news. Guess whose turn is next? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Milady. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> my liege. Wild <laughs> um, comes out of nowhere. <laughs> good old Twitter comments. My, my mistress. <laughs> my lady Lexi. <laughs> Step on me. All um, eight of his. Oh. Oh. <laughs> He didn't actually say that. He's not here. He's not here. So many implications. <laughs> he's busy being Collegrio, guys. Don't worry about it. I was going to say he's he's running as fast <laughs> as he can on all six of his spider legs with his <laughs> other two outstretched. Those are his pincers. Yes, oh exactly. Um, all right. Uh, and now he's going to turn around and every now and then i do another collegrian blast um and he, he's gonna collegrian blast uh he's gonna he's gonna hit all the same people again oh, uh, oh i'm gonna, gonna blast but he's gonna move now because he sees that he's killed lexi so he's gonna move to try to hit chance instead um, which in my head cannon works by moving on top to like the northmost position. Again, I promise there's some logic here. Uh, roll. But wait, the hmm. waves are moving me too fast. I'm already gone. Wow. All of this takes wow. place within five seconds. Wow. Very fast wave. Wow. <laughs> um, wow. There is a lot of wave action wow. going on, and this pizza card is drenched in water. Still um, buoyant. It's huge. It's huge. <laughs> it's huge. Uh, can you four please roll a deck save for me, please, again? He sees 18. I rolled 18. So. Nice, you succeed. Going to use my last mm. adrenaline die here. Mombi? Got a 20. Success. Um, I'm gonna use the inspiration die. Oh, net 20. Okay. Oh, fuckers! Um, and, uh, that was, yeah, that was Mamba's tears. Uh, and Polly, Thank you, you Mamba's Tears. 21. All right, everyone succeeds. So everyone takes 30. Ooh. Success. Okay. Getting down there. Yep. <laughs> so is Collegrio, to be fair. Um, And he's not done. Uh, oh. He is Let's going wait. to attempt to swipe at Rusty. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Does a giant? Does a is it 15, giant 16? eternal dragon? Ah! Does sixteen hit you? <laughs> no. All right, he swipes and misses, um, and uh, that is his turn. He's like perched up above you guys, um, so he's above everyone right now. It is Justin's turn. Justin will move post haste to catch his friend. Um, he catches you uh, while riding his little water wave. Goku cloud thing um, and he, uh, he catches you and uses his flaming healing ability to uh, bring you to one health and then he's going to use his bonus action to do it again to give you nice. eighteen health. So you're now at 19, Fu. 19? Yeah, 19 health. Um, yeah. After Justin, we're back to you, Lexi. Ugh. Oh, she's, she's been in and out today. Yeah, dead a couple times. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, she's gonna... Uh, how close is, is Collegiate to the ground at the moment now? So he flew up above, so he's like 200 feet above the ground right now. Okay, and she probably and you, fell. You fell like 40 feet, so you, 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 you could conceivably get within range in your turn and attack. Yeah, might as well. Actually, oh right, the other idea I had. Okay. Um, as she's flying up, can she, uh, is she close enough to any metal on buildings around her that she can, like, use, like, she wants to rip them off and throw them at Collegio. You could fly over to buildings and do that. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, you could fly to uh, a building on the west side. Um, we'll say there's a skyscraper there, even though there is not. <laughs> um, and, uh, 
to rip you... off like the metal the spire yeah like that oh sure great yeah and you can shoot it with magnetism towards him uh yeah. can you roll a d20 for me please and add your stat that we always add is intelligence right mm -hmm. um so yeah add intelligence to your d20 does that hits okay. uh roll <sighs> It would feel bad to do less than your normal attack because it's a cool idea. It's so probably we'll do... charged. Sure, ten v ten. Why not? Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, that was really bad. Cool. Um. Twenty nine. Five and. 48. 48? Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, is that, that has to be your turn. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, after Lexi is Polly. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna fly up to where he is. Um, and I'm going to use the scythe. Okay. That is a 19 to hit. Does not hit. Oh boy. All right, one more. Oh, that fell off the table. That one is a 23 to hit. Hit. Okay. Uh, and... If you guys D10. saw my notes <laughs> during when I run episodes, you'd think I was a psychopath. <laughs> it's literally just like number, arrow, number, arrow, number, arrow, number, arrow. <laughs> Uh, the Charlie Day chart. Damage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, I got pages full of Pepe Sylvia. Yeah. <laughs> 39, you said? Yes. Okay. I mean, he's beginning to pulsate. Like, energy is falling away from him. God, this song is good, dude. Chapter 2 of Deltarune is so good. Really good. It's insane that it's free. Um, Saber's World. I'm waiting for the full thing. Ugh. Very fair, Patrick. I couldn't help myself. It um, might be a while. Yeah. I, it is. Good okay content. I will wait. There are a few things in this world that I am happy to wait as long as they need. Breath of the Wild 2. Sorry, Tears of the Kingdom. I will wait as long as they need. Next season of Haikyuu. Literally take as long as you need, baby. Although I will be sad to wait. But I'll wait. End of list. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, all Polly, right. Is that your turn? I got okay rusty all right um i can't attack on this turn got to recharge so instead i i will dart over to lexi who i think is in the worst condition and i'm gonna oh, try yeah. and do a quick fix ah, um hi. now do my healing abilities get any sort of buff for being in the state that i'm in usually it's for quick fix it's i can have a maximum of five medicinal dice their d8s and then i half the number and that's how much i heal I would say not as Rayquaza, but as your god state, yes. Okay. So... Like, I, as in, the answer is yes, but not because you're Rayquaza. Right, 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 yeah. Um, Rayquaza maybe doesn't just don't learn... have them. Does Rayquaza learn recover? I don't think so. Not that know. it fucking matters, but... <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, heal away. Heal away, so I just don't have them? Is that what you want me don't to do? Don't have them. Okay. I heal Lexi for 26. God, thank you. <laughs> uh, and then my bonus action, I'm going to fly. Who's next in? in he does line? not learn recover by TM, or move tutor, or learn in Gen three. Okay. Good shit, to know. Pokemon. Yeah, oh, terrible. Dog shit, dude. It Get does it learn <laughs> rest though. Um, Mamba's next in line, right? Mamba's turn is next. E yes. Yeah. Got a good shine. Yeah. Yes. Uh, then I'll use my remaining movement to be within range for me to use help on Mamba. And I'm going to make that a teamwork help, so you get another multi-attack, like another oh, attack. Oh, that's so fucking cool! Yeah. It says Mamba, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Still um, marked out. Yeah, great. You good? And actually, it's a reaction, so you get to do that right now, as it turns out. 
Oh, like attack right now? Yep. Oh, shit. That creature may make one weapon attack with its reaction, provided it can see or hear you. Shadow boxing, baby. 25, and I know that hits. Yep. Oh, no, 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 no. For 24 damage. Nice. Uh, if it's an attack and you have multi attack, that means you can multi attack. We're swinging Aww. again, baby. Oh, <laughs> Corbin. Oh, Corbin can. Best Did can. he hear me? No. He's been wiggling. <laughs> He's been wiggling. Uh, Wiggly boy. The crop on the stream made it so that you could only see like his, his torso. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you you didn't hit say, with the uh, second one? What's that? You didn't hit with the second one? Yeah, yeah. And then third is a nat 20. Yeah, I'll do that. You get three hits? You have three hits? You get to attack three I, I, times? I thought, I, I thought he said an additional multi attack. No, no, no. Oh, so just you, like... get, you get an attack here, which counts as two attacks uh, since okay. you have multi attack. Right, never mind. Never mind. And then, and, yeah. uh, and then, it's and your then turn. during your turn, you'll be able to attack again. Fair. Fair. Okay. So on your turn, we'll use the nat 20. We'll, we'll count the nat 20 okay. for your next. Um, the Vorpal Blade, by the way, I was going to do this anyway, genuinely. Uh, the Vorpal Blade calls out to you. You can mm. hear it in your mind. And it says, uh, whether it was right or not, my father died for this fight. Use me in the next attack. This reminds me of like Link, you know, yeah. aim for the glowing points. <laughs> <on the beast. laughs> There's a 99% chance my batteries are running low. <laughs> well, he's going to hear that. He's going to pull it out and then, well, what? Is that is it my turn now? Yeah. Well, shit. Okay, so we'll oh. use that nat 20 that you rolled. And when you swing with the Vorpal Blade, it begins to glow and emanate red. Uh, and you see like a billowing red face appear in front of it as you begin to strike with it. And your shadow also comes out of your body and envelops the sword. Um, can you roll for me? What's the normal damage dice for the Vorpal Blade? Was what, 2d8? Plus, okay. yeah. And then what's the decapitation dice? Cause you did roll a 20. That's 5d8. Okay, let's have you run, uh, roll 14 d8s. God damn. Damn, this attack doing numbers, huh? Woo. It could conceivably do 14 damage. Or it could do 71. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, as you slice with it, it feels like the sword grows in like, it doesn't actually physically grow, but it like its aura extends far beyond the blade and you like slice true and you hear Yureneth yell as it slices through Calegrio. Uh and it literally like cuts him in half. And then he's trying to like rejoin himself uh, back together. Um, and you get another attack. Uh, da, 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 da. Who's after me? Uh, Chance. Mama's gonna look over to Chance. Hey, you, uh, uh, hi. You and me have been, I guess, in it from day one. Yeah, it's, it's it's been days. just like rocketing down this the river is, on a the giant way, pizza cart. Yeah. yeah, I'm allowing this conversation <laughs> to happen on anime rules only because you are 200 yeah. feet apart and a calamitous <laughs> being is in front of you. But yes. sure, you can talk to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, no, no. We're, we're definitely doing this. <laughs> and I still don't know who the fuck you are in there, other than a dump one. But me neither. <laughs> I know it's true that you give a fuck about this land and all the lands that we traverse through. No one could get through you, not even me, but I know who could. And he's going to throw the Vorpal Blade oh, down shit. to chance. Oh, I'm just going <laughs> to... <laughs> Portal behind. <laughs> Uh, it goes right into the pocket, uh, and, um, 
you feel gonna... your uh, energy meshing with Uranus, but you aren't like entering into his domain because he's kind of in your domain. Um, and it's just like a net neutral cancel. And uh, yeah, that's what happens. I foregore my turn. I end my turn. I foregore okay. my turn. Forgore. I foregore For my I turn. For I <laughs> Kafifi, oh, a very kafifi to you. I forgore. <laughs> um, Chance, it's your turn. I will just immediately, just very dramatically, look up to the sun, and using the momentum of the blade entering my pocket and increasing it twentyfold, have it shoot from the sun into <laughs> Calegrio. Good, Richard. Make sure you don't want to make it something come smaller. <laughs> 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 the Calegrian toothpick. Um, so to be clear, well, I guess it's any point you can see. Mm-hmm. You can see the sun. Yeah, you this sure is can. A neon Genesis Evangelion. I will pierce the heavens. Or I guess that's that's uh, Gurren Logan. You teleported anyway. to the sun, and we sit there going like this, waiting for it. Yeah. I don't mean like literally. <laughs> oh, I thought that's what you sun. meant. Because it takes <laughs> no. light. It takes like eight minutes to get from no, the sun. No, it's just <laughs> like you know, in the sky, so that like it looks like it's okay. Yeah, because the sword would dramatically. Take, the sword would take hundreds of years to get to you. <laughs> um. All right. Uh. Yeah. The vorpal blade appears from the sky. It's like, oh, what's that? It's a bird. It's a plane. It's. I'm about to die. Um. And. Uh, <laughs> This is cool. Uranith is screaming and howling as shadow and red energy envelops this fucking massive blade. And Uranith is like, this is so cool. Because uh, <laughs> ultimately he was just like a teenager. Um, well, all right. Technically in the lore, he was like 100 years old, but like whatever. He was the youngster. Um, so the blade will do... Fifteen D tens. I'll let you do the honors. All right. My sword is the blade that will pierce the heavens. Eighty-eight damage. He is. I mean, the sword sticks in it and stays. Or is it cooler for it to go all the way to the water? No, it stays in him uh, and just sits there. And uh, Ureneth is now going to go. Um, and he's going to exit the blade now being a part of Calegrio. And uh, like his spirit essence, his brink energy emanates out of the blade. And you just hear a, fuck you! <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, Calegrio is going to make a wisdom saving throw. I feel like that's a deep cut. I feel like every final boss has had someone save exactly that at some <laughs> point. It? I'm would pretty sure. I would not be shocked. Um, he fails the wisdom saving throw of like a random DC I just chose. Uh, and Works so for me. He'll take... 4 d10 damage and be immobilized for a turn. Calegrio or Uranus? Calegrio. Mm, that's good. She takes 18 damage. Okay, uh, and he cannot move, and coincidentally, it is his turn. Um, and Calegrio is just, like, frozen still. Uh, Fuck from, you, uh, back. Uranith is Uranus Brink, which is called... Call of War, something War Cry, something like that. <laughs> um, I'll pull up the document. Uh, Justin uh, flies up and shoots flames. First, he rolls to hit. First one misses. Second one hits. Justin does thirty-seven. Okay. Uh, after Justin, it is Lexi's turn. Lexi, um, let's finish this. Yeah, I agree. Uh, there's nothing else good to grab. She's just going to shoot more lightning. Shoot away. Righty, shooting away. You want to roll the DC? Sure. 
I got 23. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. It'll, it'll half. Okay. Um. Uh, 46, so 23. He's beginning to fall. He's crumbling at the seams. Uh, after Lexi, it is Polly. Okay. Uh, Polly, uh, feeling like he's done justice with L's agent, Scythe, is gonna revert back to his own brink. Uh, okay. and, uh, he's going to just take one massive punch at the giant hilt of the Vorpal Blade and try to drive it in deeper. And at the same time, he's going to use Gravity Schmavity at minus at two two times gravity on the Vorpal Blade, so it becomes heavier on Kukulio's back. Sick. Uh, yeah. Great. Hammer that chisel, boy. I have no idea what that's going to do. Yeah, but... well, I've been for coming up with die rolls for the last hour, so. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's okay. <laughs> Uh, also, it's called Killing Call, if anyone's curious. Um, I was somewhat close. Um, all right, yeah, let's just... I don't know, Danny, you just roll... Just roll 15 d10s for me, would you? Oh, all right, yeah, easy. Sure, if you insist. Uh, 15 d10s... If you don't kill him with this attack, you are the unluckiest man on the planet. <laughs> 82 damage. Yeah, okay. You only needed 23. It's okay. possible not to do, but uh, oh, so I almost got it. Yeah, you're close. Oh. The boss had 1,000 health. Wow. Jeez. Um, all right. You fly in and Brink Energy collects around your fist and you... And as you slam the hilt of the sword, it... And as it goes through, the gravity also pulls it through the other side and it just... This massive beam of light emanates outwards from where the sword's contact point is, and it slices him in half as the blade falls down to the ground and strikes in the ground, creating waves everywhere. Chance, you're in the water. Um, you're you're falling it's okay. off the raft. I have a, a used A card that I'm going to float on now. Great. Till <laughs> <laughs> so your brink um, goes away. <laughs> yeah. I'll be okay uh, for a minute. I'll be okay. I'll be fine. Uh, and you feel Collegrio. You see him begin to disintegrate as he wails and screams and slams buildings. Just, I was everything. You will have nothing without me. And he disperses and the rift sews back up and closes and you feel Shayla's energy and truly all of your brink energy begin to dissipate from your bodies. Those of you that were flying or floating start to slowly fall down to the water um, and uh, you fall into the river and as Shayla's energy near yes, like a building uh, then you fall just to the ground softly and as Shayla's energy leaves you you feel a brief connection to a different world one you haven't seen before. Ain't the right music. <laughs> Same, right? We'll go. Mm. Where do I want to be? Mm, this will work. You feel a connection to a different world, one you haven't seen before. There's a massive crack in the middle of the world, maybe some kind of canyon. It's in the middle of some great continent, but you see it begin to close. It sews itself together. A massive bridge just now standing over nothing. <clears throat> and you, you, you feel peace is returning to this place. Mamba. You feel a connection to the Vorpal Blade, which now begins to shrink as the Brink energy dissolves out of it. The sword <laughs> flies into your hand. You feel a connection to its previous owner. You see a vision of Lyceptia, of the ocean you visited. You see Danith and Jader, both in a pop-up apocalyptic, you know, post-apocalyptic -apoc clinic somewhere. And Jader is stabilized and breathing, and Danith sits nearby, sharpening his blades. 
and the voice in the blade calls out to you, Mamba, and it says, finally, I can rest. With the brink destroyed, I go to my father. It wasn't so bad being wielded by you or that bumbling oaf back in Lysepsha. At least you were both true warriors. You feel the brink and the life of Ureneth, son of Eurelian, leave the Vorpal Blade once and for all. Now making it just a badass-looking sword. <clears throat> Uh, and, I mean, the ensuing days are just cleanup. <laughs> I mean, massive. FEMA has no protocols <laughs> so for what pens. has taken place. What'd you say, Mamba? It's so many pens. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, yeah. the, the pens are small now, luckily. Yeah. Um, but, uh, the, you know, the, there's no protocol for this. The government has no idea what's going on. Um, there are all these videos of you guys that are all over the internet, um, of you fighting god uh the coming months have weird reckonings with religion like the world is put into this complete fray of like coming to terms with what there are other places the uh, what was this thing who are these people and they ultimately look to you guys for for answers um a lot of the time in in, in the ensuing weeks and months but um hargrove and uh jameson's company b division which now uh, passes into Will's trust until Justin is ready. Um, so Will is now basically the most powerful man on the planet uh, in charge of his own company in this one. Uh, they work hard to keep you guys sheltered from any unwanted uh, attention. Um, but you are- Justin's you are gonna inherit Ernatech? Uh, yes. Oh, an interesting, an, an interesting thing I did not think about till just now. Uh, yeah, possible marry the families together, um, create a global empire. That won't be a problem. <laughs> um, campaign four, it's just the monopoly of the electronics industry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> has, uh, has Rusty lost the ability to speak? <gasps> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, um... He has thoughts in English. He can communicate with you guys via, like, a phone or writing. But he can no longer speak to you. But he's fully cognizant still. Um, uh, he has not lost the ability to be sentient. Um, he just can't. You don't understand what he says anymore. <laughs> Alexi wants to be working on a device that vocalizes thoughts. You squeak, are able squeaker. To... Squeak, squeak him. You are able to develop such a thing. Oh, my fire alarm is going off. That's not what she's working on. I will you do the, make... the right thing and go. Let's go to a break. If I'm not back in five minutes, just keep adding time to the break and we'll see what happens. I'll be right <laughs> okay. back. Bye, friends. <laughs> okay. Clean We're good. We're good. It was central just to our unit. Uh, the fires. Uh, I'm dying soon, but it's fine. Um, no. Gotta wrap uh, wrap this up first. There was something in the oven uh, that caused smoke, um, but we're we're chill. Um, That's good. Yes, that is good. Uh, so, you'd be shocked when there are fire alarms building wide. How few people actually leave the building? I leave the building every time. Like if it's just my unit and I know what it was, I'll turn it off. But if it's building wide, like I'm fucking out. Yeah. Um, why Could would be. you? Why would you not? Uh, so yeah, um, you're able to develop such a device with with little issue, pretty quick with Sam's help. Um, and uh, yeah, the 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 lot of you are sort of just the government commemorates you. Um, the United States government doesn't really know what to do with you, but uh, you know. Lexi, your father works very hard with his political contacts to make it clear that, like, no, powers are gone. Like, nobody has abilities anymore. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the Brink, this incredibly well-kept secret, now is taught in classes. Um, people start being open with information. More people knew about this than you thought. There were Brink users all over the place. Um, and, uh, you know, companies start making uh, uh, attempts to contact other worlds. 
Uh, people start researching Dr. Rell's work to try to recreate the portal. Like, it is a dawn of a new age of information. Um, and uh, something unexpectedly nice happens as well for Earth. There is this sense, it's what we hope would happen when something like this happens. Um, and because I'm the ruler of this world, I decide it is so. Uh, instead of everybody being terrified and trying to weaponize this new knowledge, um, nations begin to band together in all corners of the world like, we are not alone. And like, this is more interesting than destroying each other. Uh, so there are a lot of ramifications. New York City uh, takes a long time to be the same and will not be the same for some time. There is a lot of destruction um, in New York City as a result of this fight, but you are not to blame. Uh, nobody blames you for that. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, ultimately you guys can can really do whatever you'd like now for a brief moment of like saying uh, uh, goodbye to these characters, basically of like anybody you'd like to speak with. Um, you do find out from, uh, from Will that Steven's family is taken care of, like they will, they will not want for anything. Um, moving forward, uh, they, they will have more, uh, resources than they know what to do with. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll say that we are six months after the fact. Uh, Rusty, you've got this, this machine now that mimics your, your normal voice that you used to have, uh, cause they had recordings to be able to build an AI structured data set off of, um, to like recreate your voice as it was. Very cool. Um, and, uh, the lot of you have been invited to a uh, uh, sort of just a, a nice little dinner uh, at Hargrove up on the restaurant floor. Um, and uh, Will is there. Lyle is regrettably there. Um, Dr. Sam is there. All of you guys are there. And uh, you can bring members of your family or friends or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so who would, who would people like to bring to this event? Only me. My family's already there. They've been living in the floorboards. Right. Uh, I am in your walls. I am in your um, walls. Uh, yeah, Polly, we'll be keeping an eye on it. Paul, you bring in the fam? All of them. All of them. Good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm realizing Lexi has her mom and dad who will be there. You are the only member of this campaign <laughs> with family, really. I mean, Lexi does, obviously, but like with siblings and shit, like it's just Polly. Um,. Uh, also, I, I guess the Colonel must be dead in the Shadow Dimension at this point, unless Mamba is, like, going in there every night to torture him. Um, oh, he's definitely dead. He's okay, dead. yeah. Uh, and Mamba, we never got a ton of closure on, uh, on the, uh, O-A... O-M-A? O-M, O-M-A? The one, yeah, yeah O-M-A, me one last man episode, yeah. that's funny. Um, and, uh, we'll say that, uh, Will offered to do some some investigative work for you to sort of figure out, you know, what the fuck is going on with that. Mm -hmm. uh, and he presents you with a file that is filled with your past uh, at this dinner. And it's it, it's wrapped in like, it, it's presented to you as a present. Like it's wrapped and everything. And he says, this is everything I could find about um, the organization that took you in and what they did to your memories and who you were before. Uh, whether you open it or not, or I guess he's British. Whether you open it or not is up to you, but um, this is what I found. Well, thank you. Uh, he's not going to open it right then, but he'll, he'll, he'll keep it wrapped and, you know, like tucked away somewhere safe. Nice. Um, and uh, Will uh, stands up and he, he clinks a glass and he says, I'd like to thank everyone for coming tonight. Um, obviously, we are a group of people that in some way or another were either involved or only really one degree separated from the events of the last year um and so you know i'd just like to thank all of you for your hard work genuinely literally saved the world and maybe all the other worlds uh so um here is to lexi and max and rusty and paulie and mamba and chance and justin uh, without whom we would not be here. Uh, and also to my lost friends. Uh, may they rest in peace. And everybody says, here, here, and drinks up. Um, and, uh, yeah, would anybody like to make conversation with anyone before we close up here? 
Lex is probably reprimanding people's table manners. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to cotillion. I'm trying to steal Will's wallet. <laughs> he keeps. He's like, fucking stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I present Chance with a piece of cheese. Ah, excellent. I eat it immediately with great um, gusto. Dr. Sam is is constantly pouring drinks for her four research scientists who look just as disheveled as the day you met them. Uh, <laughs> like, as she is, like, they are workhorses. Uh, and they are drinking. Um, Lyle can be seen filling drinks, scaring people, etc. Um, uh, yeah. And I think, Polly, unless you'd like to speak with any members of your family. No, I've I mean, them all your in mom, over the last six months. Your mom says something outlandish <laughs> at the dinner table. Um, oh, ads coming in now? Bruh. Snooze. I know it just, it's the, I can't, I've used all the snoozes. <laughs> the oh, snoozes have been uses. Uh, I apologize, and everybody. Now we lose. Um, but, uh, yeah, we sort of pull away, you know, if this were a TV show or a movie, the camera pans slowly outwards, um, and we just see, uh, uh, you know, people fade away as the night goes on, um, and uh, ultimately we are left with just the six of you sitting around a table, shooting the shit, catching up. Maybe a couple of you got whiskeys. Uh... Polly, you've been given a box of cigars uh, that was give, that was left to you by Jameson. You've passed them out. People are smoking cigars. People are trying to get Lexi to like smoke the cigar. <laughs> um, and uh, she's like, no, 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 no. Um, and uh, just a group of friends having a great time in a normal world where everything's all right. Oh. And that'll Cute. conclude campaign three of speedrunners and dragons. Oh. Uh. <laughs> well done, Clay. Well done. Thanks. Incredible. I appreciate that. Um, Thank you for allowing us to have an anime battle to finish it off. Yes. yes. Uh, I would, for the anime battle, uh, we have to give thanks to Kung Fu Fruit Cup, who at the end of campaign two, somebody got like a big anime moment. Um, it was either one of the end. Well, Steven got like his anime moment, right? Um, and Fu afterwards was like, man, I wish we all got an anime moment. And I was like, noted. Uh, that will be tucked away. Um, hey, so uh, yeah, I wanted to give you guys like a fucking like no holds barred. We're invincible. Um, you could have died to be clear. You almost uh, this, okay. Yes. Um, but uh, Bobby, thank you for the five gifted. Delilah, thank you for 300 bits. Really appreciate that. Uh, yeah, let's, before I put a bow on Speedrunners and Dragons, um, why don't we get some final plugs here? Danny B. Hello, I'm Danny B. I play Zelda. I speedrun Ocarina of Time. Uh, and last week, I actually just set a new any percent world record for the game, which was subsequently beaten by the person who I beat. So it was a nice battle going on. Uh, I will be continuing that battle and Let's also go. relearning uh, Glitchless Any Percent, which is my bread and butter that I started running nine years ago. So I'm re-picking it up again. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So if you like OOT, stop by. Sweet. Uh, the Black Tastic. That's right. I do a lot of uh, retro and indie gaming. That's uh, the brunt of my stuff. But again, this is the final week in October for uh, our charity endeavor. We reached $5,000 for... Um, you know, Hurricane Fiona victims in the islands, Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. And uh, if you like, uh, you know, chipping on in for a charity event, if you like keeping good vibes going, I invite you to join into my streams Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern. Nice. Dangers? Um, hi, I'm Dangers. Uh, I stream Mario games, speedrunning Mario games. Um, it was Odyssey for a while, but now it's kind of everything. So that's kind of cool. Um, but also, I just want to do a plug for the guy above me on the screen right here because, like, all of like streaming by itself is already a lot of work. But having to go through the the cultivation of like something that is you know written out and planned and everything like that to provide for you guys, like it's a it's a fuck ton of work. So just like round of applause in the chat. I'm actually just gonna I'm just gonna fucking do it right here because like oh, you took what I was gonna do. That was last. Yeah, sorry, Foo. <laughs> 
You can do it again if you want. Second Shut round of applause. Up. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Twitch.tv yeah. slash dangers. All right, Patty. Uh, I'm Patty. That's right. And you can find me in all of the Patty places doing all the Patty things. Mm. Mm. See you there. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Fu? <laughs> hey. It's me, Fu. Um, <gasps> do a lot of Nintendo things. And uh, I'm still tired because COVID, but oh. But she powered uh, through for you. I did, I did, I powered through. And not only that, I was gonna do the thing that Danger's already did, so. Oh. <laughs> I mean, great job. Honestly, Thanks. it's been, and I'm sure that you all can say the same thing, but it's been so much fun because it's hard to get me to commit to things, to doing things outside of my own schedule. Cause I always make myself so busy. So the fact that I wanted to come back for another season of this means that it was something that I was like, I I want to not be flaky and like do this because it was so fun. So sure. I had a really great time. And that means that you did a wonderful job. Damn. So like huge props to you and thank you for that. And mm -hmm. then you all, by the way, in the group are also super fucking fun. No yeah. use. Thanks for smile. making it so great. Yeah. I'll always sing praises of Clay's creativity for this project. Yeah, absolutely. So um well thank Horses. you um <clears throat> now take us away production give it to clay no 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 give no. it to clay no it doesn't no it doesn't feel right to be up here alone i don't yes. like that this is yes. a communal effort no this is a communal effort speed and dragons fighting. doesn't exist without the players um uh so yeah i mean um through three campaigns three worlds <laughs> one universe <laughs> Um, the story of the brink is finished. Uh, that is what I have come to on my own calling this group of seasons. Uh, this is the story of the brink from start to finish, um, uh, in its entirety. Uh, and, uh, life continues to flourish throughout said universe, unhindered by the lingering doom of a malevolent force waiting to consume it. From Shalane to Lyceptia, from Lyceptia to New York City, the story has been told. Um, why don't we get a little persona music? Uh, thank you all so much for your dedication to the show and to these stories over the past two years and change. Uh, I started writing Campaign 1 in June of 2020 and have been overwhelmed by the support since then. Uh, I am reading from a script only because I thought about extemping this speech and decided not to. <laughs> Um, from people saying that they've binged our work to those who have told me they have watched the entirety of the show twice, which I found Ooh. out last week. A couple people oh. in the community were like, yeah, I'm on my third rewatch right now. I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> um, I'm bewildered that words that I thought were always reserved for hit TV shows or movies are being to describe a dumb little project I started with my friends. Um, I look to be frank. I don't know what the future of Speedrunners and Dragons is. But I can tell you that for now, I'm satisfied, I'm tired, and I'm ready to spend my storytelling energy on other projects. Um, I will always be making things because I would fucking die if I weren't making stuff. Uh, so Speedrunners and Dragons has been that muse and that sort of instrument for a while, that vehicle, but I'm ready to spend that energy elsewhere. Um, and I know that that is disappointing for many people. I am sorry. Um, but ultimately, uh, you know, I, I don't know what the future of Speedrunners and Dragons is, but I can tell you that, you know, there definitely may come a day when the show returns, whether for a one-off or a new campaign, but it might be a while. Uh, until then, please follow all of the players that have been on this show throughout the various campaigns. You just heard from five of them, uh, but also Fant and uh, DGR have played with us in the past. Um, and are, are definitely an integral part of this uh, this thing uh, that we made. So all the players, Patty, Danny B, Fant, DGR, Dangers, the Black Tastic, and Kung Fu Fruit Cup have been our various cast members throughout the course of this. Uh, none of this would have been possible without them. And I apologize for my constant hounding about character creation, level ups, and scheduling. Um, and the endless tumult of... <laughs> uh, we will have merch. We won't have merch. Uh, be here on this day. Never mind. Um... It is very weird to tell your friends to do things, uh, but 
ultimately, yes, I'm very, very thankful for this project. I feel if I say too much more, I will repeat myself. Um, but uh, I love Speedrunners and Dragons. I love this team a lot. Uh, I chose these people initially. I cho Campaign one, I chose players that I was like, these people do not know each other. Uh, and the goal was for them to foster a connection through it because I've always liked the idea of campaigns where people don't have uh, inside jokes already and uh, preconceived notions of what friendship is for them. And I think it has been very fun to watch friendships mature out of this. I spent 90% of my time at AGDQ with Fu and Dangers and Bobby. So, uh, <laughs> you know, that just goes to show. Or SGDQ, I would do it I again too. Yeah, do it again. in a heartbeat. 100%. So, At some future GDQ, we're doing a live one. It's oh, gonna happen. We oh, gotta... that much I can tell you. A live, <laughs> a live one shot is in the future for these people. Some Venn diagram of these persons uh, will be in a, the second I can book a space for a live show with cameras that is well produced, it will be done. When I have money for that and <laughs> we can do that, I will do that. Uh, but thank you all so much for watching Speedrunners and Dragons. My name is Adef, and I have been your dungeon master all these nights. Good night. <laughs>